of one minute of 45 seconds. A round number two. Declare the winner by referee countdown. Iris One, two, three, one, two, one, two.
Now, ladies and gentlemen, our third fight on tonight's bill. In the blue corner, we have Danny Keating. And in the red corner, we have Gerwin Mendoza. Mendoza with his eight fight record, six and two. Four wins by way of knockout, and Danny Keating with a perfect six and zero at four knockouts. Keating coming forward. Left jab, Mendoza on the ropes. Keating at the moment, dictating from the center of the ring. Sticks out at left jab. Both fighters quite cagey in the early seconds of the opening round. Keating trying to press home the advantage. Mendoza light at his feet. Keating in the blue trunks. Daddy boy emblazoned across his waistband. Keating side these lad right up front of us here at Leisureland. No real action as yet in the opening round. We've had 57, 53 seconds of the opening round. Keating once again, very, very cagey opening round of this contest. A six round contest at the super lightweight division. Keating, long left jab. Just about makes the target. Mendoza on the retreat. Looking dangerous, unleashes the left to the chest. No real impact on Keating who still comes forward. Keating still trying to just, it's very much cat and mouse in these early stages of the halfway through the opening round, but scheduled six rounder, sure to live it up. Keating comes forward. Try to line up. Combination with Keating in the center of the ring. Mendoza comes forward, left, drops well short. Left jab from Mendoza lands, but Keating comes back again with another jab of his own. Still commanding the center of the ring. Right in front of us now, just above us here, Mendoza. Hands held high, white gloves. Keating looking to get into a bit of a rhythm. Keating it at long range in this opening round. Mendoza again flashes out the left, but doesn't hit the target. Keating, jab lands onto the gloves of Mendoza. And now over the neutral corner on the far side of the ring. Mendoza comes forward, probably for the first time in the, the fight. On two minutes 30, 30 seconds to go on the opening round. Keating in the center of the ring, left jab again short. Yet to land a punch. Mendoza left to the chest of Keating, no impact whatsoever. Keating retreats slightly. 10 seconds inside the final 10 seconds of a very, very cagey opening round. Mendoza comes forward with the left jab. Keating slips away with it. Got an equal first round. Keating dictating from the center of the ring for the majority of the opening round. Mendoza did try a couple of flurries, but a very, very even, even opening round. Midway to the end of this, the opening round. That's super lightweight. Danny Keating from Kerry and Nicaraguan Gervin Mendoza. Seconds. Referee asked for the ring to be cleared of the seconds. And we're away for the second round of this super lightweight fight here. Scheduled six rounds here at Leisure Landing, Salt Hill in Galway. Danny Keating with a perfect 6-0 record against Gervin Mendoza with 6-2. Four of those by way of knockout for both men's. Keating started the second round a bit better rhythm. He's already landed two jabs. Mendoza coming back with a left jab. Again, the fight is pretty long range. Mendoza comes forward, doesn't land. Again, tries it up right over the top. Doesn't hit the target as Keating slips away. Keating now coming forward with the left hand. Keeping it up there. Back to the neutral corner is Mendoza and Keating now sets about but drops away out of the center of the ring once again. 
Keating lands a jab. No real impact on Mendoza as of yet in the first round and a half. Mendoza comes back with two jabs of his own, but Keating commanding the center of the ring. Stepping forward, now sticks out a long left jab. Enjoying a good reach advantage here, Keating over the slightly shorter Mendoza. His togs resemble those of Hector Camacho back in the, in the 80s. But it's Keating that's in the center of the ring. Mendoza right up above us here, retreating, dancing. Dances to the right. Keating now has him. Keating sizing up his man. Takes it with left to the body. Steps away again. Mendoza tries to counter. Does it land? Keating once again in the command. That long left hand. Trying to find a way through. The southpaw attack of Mendoza. This time it's changing style during this contest. But Keating. with the left hand. Does land under the body of Mendoza. But again, no impact on the Nicaraguan. Keating with a good right hand. Hits the target. First punch of any note from Keating in the fight so far, but he is slightly on top. Mendoza counters. But again, in the center of the ring, Keating slips away. We'll use that long left jab again. Lands to the forehead of Mendoza. Mendoza comes back to his own now, going back to the orthodox style, Mendoza. Left hand lead, right hand cup beneath his chin. Flashes, Keating does, dances away and moves back to the center of the ring, but Keating seems to be dictating the fight. A good right hand from Keating, the second good right hand from Keating lands onto the, the chin of Mendoza. No real grimace from the Nicaraguan as we enter the final ten, five seconds of the round, but it certainly is a round for Keating. Downs is away at the end of the second round. In Danny's, in Danny Keating's corner tonight is Gerard Clancy, of course, himself a professional boxer in Australia. And Danny, this week spent his week's preparation in the Uptalard Boxing Club, of course the home of Kieran Malloy, the home, of, the home also of our big fight analyst Sean Clancy, who will be joining us a little bit later on, was live here on ESPN and on Goal of the FM Sport, but a good start to the fight for Danny Keating, two rounds in, Keating, I would have him ahead on the scorecard, that's all out of the decision of the referee. Our earlier fights this evening went the way of the opening fight went to Dave Ryan from Shannon, Ireland, made it 3-0 against Berman Sanchez with a 60-54 decision. And Tiernan Bradley knocked out Adrian Orban from Hungary in the second round of our second fight. Into the third fight, Danny Keating, this at super lightweight. Danny Keating versus Gervin Mendoza. Mendoza hailing from Nicaragua. Keating from Kerry. The home of Gaelic football, they'll tell you. But Danny Keating comes forward with the left jab, long left jab. He's leading with that jab. Mendoza tries to counter Mendoza, does counter with a good shot. But Keating slips away. Right over us here in the commentary position, Mendoza. Back to an orthodox style, Keating. Comes forward. Very, very cagey opening, two and a half rounds. But it's with a bit of a headlock, referee splits them. And again, Keating will come forward. Shaping with a left hand. Mendoza sticks out the left at right, still covering his right eye. Comes forward with a left hand, doesn't land. Keating dances right in the center of the ring. The left jab, a left jab to the face of Mendoza. Mendoza shows no emotion again a log left from Keating doesn't land Mendoza tries to counter as I say Keating enjoying a decent reach advantage they come together nothing happening referee breaks them they touch gloves a very good right hand from over the top by Keating and that hurt Mendoza first punch of note in the contest in round three Mendoza tries to 
Come back into the centre of the ring, but Keating now will begin to find his range. We'll have confidence after that shot landed. He's coming forward again. Mendoza attacks himself with two jabs. No impact on Keating. Keating again with a good right hand, a very good right hand, and that hurt Mendoza. A very a second, second good right hand and a good jab to follow up from Keating. Keating certainly well on top in this third round. Mendoza looks at Keating, comes back and counters with one of his own, but Keating slips away. Third round of a schedule six. Danny Keating with a f six and zero r professional record. Coming into this fight, four of those by knockout on top of the three rounds. Mendoza comes left hand, drops short. Keating left to the body. And again, Keating commanding the center of the ring. And a right that drops short. Mendoza looks. Keating with a bit of showboating. Mendoza not impressed. Inside the final ten. Keating left lead. Looking to land one final shot. Into the third round. And certainly Keating on top at this stage. As we're all halfway through the fight. Keating a very couple of very good right hands during that fight, during that round. It puts him, I think, comfortably ahead on the referee's scorecard as we speak. Following this fight, next up, we will John Cody from Galway. He will take on Sandeep Singh Bhatti from Chakur in India. And then we have Kurt Walker versus Jonas Rodriguez Gómez de la Vieira, a gentleman hailing from Brazil. And then we have the Irish light heavyweight title bout between Jamie Morrissey and Kevin Cronin. And of course, top of the bill tonight, Kieran Malloy making his homecoming with a Perfect 4-0 record, 3 of by way of knockout as he takes on Fernando Masquera from Colombia, boxing out of Valencia in Spain. As we get ready for round four here in Leisureland, round four of this super lightweight tight clash between Irishman Danny Keating hailing from County Kerry and Gervin Mendoza from Nicaragua in South America. Mendoza leading with the left hand. Keating controlling. What's happening so far in this contest? Certainly the third round was his best round. And Mendoza now knows that he's behind on the scorecard and needs to come forward. A wild right hand from Keating, but it does. Again, Mendoza's a bit of showboarding there, so what are, you, what are you punching? But Keating is on top. A left jab from Keating. He's sizing up his opponent on the left-hand side of the ring as we look. Mendoza count now gone back to a southpaw stance. Keating trying to get move that left hand to set him up. Tries to go low. Again, keeping it at long range. Keating forcing Mendoza to try and get close. And if he does get close, he leaves himself open. One would think another big right hand from Keating could be the. It's a good right hand from Keating right above us here now. Mendoza felt that. A minute and 12 seconds into round number four. Keating over the top with a left. Counter left from Mendoza, who is throughout this fourth round is keeping the southpaw stance. Keating pokes out the left. Does it land? Again, Mendoza is trying to draw him on a good right from Keating. That lands right in front of us here. The neutral corner. Great right from Keating. That lands and puts Mendoza under pressure. Right over the top right from Keating. Certainly enjoying once again the best of the exchanges in this fourth round. Southpaw jab from Mendoza doesn't really affect Keating, who is coming forward. He's controlled this fight virtually, certainly from the start of the second round. First round was a getting to know your own, but Keating is on top here. Mendoza moving around the ring, but Keating at all a very good right hand over. In the blue corner from Keating, his own corner. Mendoza starts to flash himself. A little, very much showboarding. That's only going to rile Keating more than a very good right hand from Keating. Mendoza calls him on, saying, you didn't hurt me. I think he did. A left from Mendoza, who's gone back now to an orthodox stance. 
He's clearly smiling at Keating, but Keating has his mind focused on the job. The job at hand is to take care of Gerwin Mendoza, which he had a very good right hand again over the top from Keating. He's clearly on top. That's the end of our fourth round. Certainly Danny Keating, certainly on top. Through four of these six rounds, but Keating will certainly be on top of everybody's scorecard. One would think Mendoza done a lot of showboating in that round, but a very good round for Danny Keating. Out, round, coming up round five of six. Still eight seconds to go, referee splits them. They are eager. Round number five. Mendoza trailing, one would think, on the referee scorecard. Coming forward with a left hand. Danny Keating. Tell to remain unbeaten. Already has a 6 and 0 career record. Nobody make it 7 and 0 It gets very rough. Mendoza ducking under Keating's left arm. Trying to tell the referee that Keating is holding him and pulling him down. I don't think so. Maybe a sign of fatigue on the behalf of Mendoza. Left hand from Ke Keating. Doesn't land. He's still controlling the fight though. As we're here. Coming up to 50 seconds in round number five. Good shot there from Mendoza, but Keating comes forward once again. Left hand lead. As Mendoza for this round returns to the orthodox stance. Keating goes left, lands on the shoulder of Mendoza. Left jab that lands on his chin. Good jab from Keating, tries to follow with a right, doesn't follow. The touch gloves in the center of the ring. Keating, left hand lead. Mendoza on the ropes. Tries to counter. It's going KG. Mendoza trying to get KG again, but Keating has him now in the neutral corner. Good right from Keating. Just about lands, but. In the center of the ring. Mendoza backing away, Keating watching him, fans to go, come forward, and again, for all the time, Mendoza is just looking at him, smiling, he's hoping to land a big one because he knows he needs a big one, but Keating dominating the fight for me so far. Again, little action, a fan from Mendoza, Keating drops away, a lot of shaving, a good right from Keating, does land, whether it had an impact on Mendoza, one wonders, he's right above us now here, Mendoza tries to dance out of the corner, does. Moves back towards his own corner, Keating comes forward. Back in the centre of the ring. But long reach advantage of Keating's. Again a good, a right that doesn't really land from Keating. And now a right that does right over the top of the knocks. Mendoza back on his heels as Keating comes forward in this fifth round. That's inside the final ten. Mendoza trying to shape coming forward again. Six. 
sixth and final round of this super lightweight contest between Danny Keating in the blue trunks and in the black and white we have Gerwin Mendoza from Nicaragua the carry man Keating certainly in front as we go into this final round as he attempts to take his professional record to 7-0 and zero. will it be with five knockouts of or four the next two and a half minutes will tell us that but he is in front of this fight as Mendoza comes to the centre of the ring tries to boss the early exchanges he needs a big round here Goes far as maybe saying he may need a KO, but certainly Keating is keeping this at long range. He knows he's in front. He quite measured with his performance so far. As Mendoza backs away, smiles, comes forward with a left hand again. Mendoza goes back to the orthodox stance in this round as Keating with a long left lead in the center of the ring. Is certainly dictating terms of this Mendoza looking for a way forward good right hand very good combination punches from Keating and now he's on top as he goes in it's four without reply from Keating a right to the ribs a very good shot from Keating he certainly has hurt Mendoza and Mendoza is back on the ring into the neutral corner over on the far side of the ring Keating working hard good right to the head as Keating Mendoza goes down tends to say that he's not hurt I think he is he tr tries to counter, but again, Keating slips away, keeps him at long range. He's well in front on the scorecards in this contest. And with 143 left in the sixth and final round, Mendoza comes forward with a left jab. But Keating keeping it at bay. Mendoza comes forward again. A very couple of very good shots from Mendoza. Two very good lefts. Bang, bang from Mendoza. Probably his best period of the fight so far. But back in the centre of the ring but a showboating for Mendoza but a good left jab from Keating who needs to regain control in this round he was in control of the opening minute minute 20 seconds of this sixth and final round Mendoza has come forward but Keating keeping it at bay in that long left hand Mendoza being encouraged from his corner to come forward. Keating shapes, uses the left jab, doesn't land. Mendoza comes with a left himself. Keating dances away. Keating back in the center of the ring. Ten to go inside the final ten. And look what it looks like. This is going all the way for certain. But Danny Keating, for my money, certainly worthy of making it seven at all. Very good scrap. Danny Keating and Gerwin Mendoza, they embrace in the centre of the ring. And we now await the referee's decision on our third contest of the night at Super Lightweight. Danny Keating goes to his corner, Gerwin Mendoza acknowledges the crowd. He's put up a good performance to Nicaraguan. But one would think the third defeat in his nine about professional career is now awaiting as we wait the referee's decision and ring announcer Terry Kavanagh will deliver that in the next couple of moments
Galway welcome for John Cooney. Now boxing out of Galway. The super featherweight bout. A 6-0 career record. As he takes on from Chakur in India, Sandeep Singh Bhatti. An 8-7 and seven career record. Two of those eight victories by way of knockout. As we started this super feather. Tied with John Cooney. Southpaw leading. A good left hand already from Cooney. A good short right to the body and a left over the top. And already Singh Bhatti comes back with a wild right hand himself. But Cooney in the centre of the ring. The first 23 seconds of the bout. A big left hand over the top from Cooney. Landed on the gloves of Singh Bhatti. Who comes back with a left of his own. But moving forward, trying to go low there was Cooney with a left hand to the ribs. But... Didn't make the target. Again, a good right hand, a very good right hand from Cooney. Opel Singh Batty clasped his gloves together, saying, that didn't hurt me, but I think it may just have landed. Left hand over the top from Cooney, lands on the gloves of the Indian. Who comes back to the centre of the ring, wearing pristine white trunks and the maroon and gold of John Cooney. Cooney undefeated in six bouts. We reach one, one minute and ten of the up. Very good left, very two very good left hands and a right to the ribs of 
Sigvadi from Cooley who has him over in that far corner in the blue corner. Sigvadi comes back again but Rudy Cooley lands him right to the side of the head. A good combination to the body from Cooley who's certainly on top of this first round as we reach midway in this opening round. Typical to see this going the full eight with the start that Cooley has made. But Batty is coming forward again himself. Left hand Lee, but Cooney knocks out that right jab. Very comfortable at this all up in the opening round. We're coming up towards two minutes of the opening round. John Cooney boxing out of Galway with a, comes with a right jab and a left over the top. Doesn't land. The jab lands towards the forehead of Singvati. Cooney controlling the fight in these opening round. Sigvati smiles at him. And he's trying to tell Cooney he had heard of him, but Cooney is coming forward. All the good work at this opening round coming from Cooney, who puts Sigvati back into the corner. And a couple of combinations from Cooney, a right that lands on the jaw, the left jaw of Sigvati. Two very good punches from Cooney. Has certainly ruffled the Indian's feathers as Cooney comes forward. Right over in top of us here in the at corner, John Cooney. It's super featherweight, Singvadi. Tom's tries a right of his own, but a couple of short left right from Cooney. Ten seconds to go in the opening round. Certainly one that's going the way of John Cooney. A very good combination over in the far corner, and Cooney landing four, five, six unanswered punches as he goes back to his corner. Over in the blue corner, John Cooney. Certainly on top, and quite clearly, in front of the scorecards in this opening round. Round two of schedule eight rounder at this super featherweight here in Leisureland and Galway. In the Galway Risings Bill, the association with Conlon Boxing, top ranked promotions, ESPN and GBFM. Commonly on the final live on GBFM, the fi final fight, the big one of the night. But th in this super featherweight contest, John Cooney, boxing out of Galway, is certainly lording the centre of the ring here. His opponent Sanjeet Singh Bhatti has walked on to two very good shots from Cooney who comes forward again with a couple of lefts to the body. Singh Bhatti tries to counter with a good right hand. But Cooney, Cooney takes one there from Singh Bhatti but certainly they've both opening up in the centre of the ring. Singh Bhatti retreats as Cooney comes forward again. A left right to the body from Cooney. Singh Bhatti covers up, tries to come forward himself. 57 seconds in round number two. They engage in the centre of the ring. The referee will split them. Singh Badi is holding Cooney's right hand. The referee encourages them to split. And John Cooney, with that southpaw lead, gets back to the centre of the ring. Working very well. Working the ring well so far, Cooney. Measuring his opponent. Singh Badi lands short with a right uppercut. Cooney... In the centre, controlling the fight. A left, a wild left from Cooney, follows up with a right to the body of Singh Vadi, who counters himself with a right hand that lands on the glove of Cooney. John Cooney with a perfect record so far. 6 0 coming into this with two wins by way of not going to chopping left hand from Cooney. No good, but a left hand lead lands. One, two, three punch combination from Cooney. Tries a left uppercut, a wild left hand from Cooney, a right hand that lands on the Face of Singh Bhatti, who has no answer at this present time to Cooney's domination of the fight as we go into the final minute in the second round. A good right hand from Singh Bhatti. 
as Cooney retreats, takes a breather, comes forward now with a right hand lead. John Cooney controlling this fight up to now as he invites Singvati onto him. Singvati looking to try and find his range. A good left from Cooney, slips away from a wild right hand from Singvati and moves to the neutral side of the corner side of the ring. Cooney lands with a right again. Singvati beginning to tread a little water as we move into the final 20 seconds in round number two. John Cooney leading Southpaw right hand. Left hand, a very good left hand. Singvati does cover up, but he did take part of the, the blow to the forehead. Final 10 seconds. And John Cooney stamping his authority on this super feather bout. Over his opponent, Sandeep Singvati. A good round for Cooney. A very good round for John Cooney. Two clear rounds for, in the favour of the Golan and John Cooney in this super feather title bout. Round number three, just We're checking Sandy Singbadi's corner. As John Cooney once again comes forward. Cooney dominating the center of the ring. A good right to the ribs of Singbadi who is a tough customer but John Cooney comes forward with a combination four punches a left over the top Singbadi retaliates with a right himself but John Cooney a wide left hand and right that got through to the rib cage of the Indian but John Cooney as I said, in this round, controlling the contest. But Singbadi beginning to get wild now with his shots. He's looking for one of those Hail Marys. But John Cooney is a bit more streetwise than Singbadi gives him credit for. Again, he lunges forward, Singbadi. But the ring craft of Cooney shows there in the red corner. Singbadi retaliates, but there's no real menace in those punches. Cooney lands with a left. Slightly deflected by the glove of Singbadi. Singbadi tries to go short with his own left hand, but a good left hand from John Cooney in the third round. We're all a minute and 30 seconds halfway through the third round. Both boxers now in the center of the ring. John Cooney goes to the body of Singbadi, goes over the top. Right jab goes a three, four punch combination. No real power in the, each, each of the four punches, but they still hit the target as Singbadi has to come forward now. Looking. Slightly fatigued, Singvati lunges at two right hands, but Cooney's ring speed and his agility really showing it. Cooney retaliates with four, five. Combination punch. John Cooney from Galway with a perf perfect record so far, six and all. Coming towards the final minutes of the third round. John Cooney certainly cl clear on most people's scorecards around the ring, and the one that matters most is that of the referee. But John Cooney, as the tempo slows once again, Cooney controlling the tempo of the fight. Singvati is gets involved, comes lunging, but Cooney, his ring craft and his boxing nuance showing through. Two good left hands, a left hook from Cooney gets through. Singvati beginning to tread water. Says he's not hurting him, but if one look at the face of Singvati will tell you that John Cooney is landing with over 60-70% of those punches. Final 10 seconds of the third round as John Cooney comes forward. Right lead. Singvati. 
three rounds down and certainly John Cooney in front. We're back in action here, round four in this super featherweight bout. Goal is John Cooney taking on from Shakur in India, Sandeep Singh Vati. Cooney, who has a perfect record of 6 0, oh, on top here in this super featherweight title, this super featherweight bout. Again, a couple of co four or five punch combination from Cooney. He is hitting the target from the center of the ring. Singh Vati. Is durable, but there's no doubting that Cooney is the classier boxer and is on top. Singh Batty dances away over towards the blue corner as John Cooney is a sweeping right, right to the body, tries to work into the, the ribs of Singh Batty. A right hand gets through, Singh Batty comes back, but he holds on and holds on as he wraps up Cooney's right hand. A very good right hand uppercut from John Cooney. Two very good punches. Singh Batty certainly right up in front of us here. Retaliates with a right hand himself, but Cooney trying to measure his man. Told by the referee not to be using the shoulder, but Cooney, three, four unanswered jabs towards the head of Singh Vadi. Singh Vadi with a right himself, doesn't land a good right from John Cooney. A right, that jab certainly from Cooney, that right jab is certainly controlling this contest. Plenty of encouragement from the near packed attendance already here at Leisureland. John Cooney, a right uppercut that doesn't land. But as we come approach a minute and 50 of round number four, John Cooney, certainly two good punches from John Cooney. John Cooney with a left again, another left. A swinging left from John Cooney that fails to make the target. Singh Batty tries to retaliate, but he seems to be running out of juice as Cooney tries to set him up for a big left. Cooney right to the body. Again, he pushes him away with the arm. He's certainly dominating this fight. Referee warns Singh Batty for attempting to hold. He's covered up right up above us here, but John Cooney comes forward. A left uppercut from John Cooney. A right jab works again, right-left combination. It's five, six unanswered punches from Cooney. A right from Singh Batty fails to meet the target. As we're here, in round four, coming up to the final 20 seconds of this round. John Cooney with a left, a right to the ribs of Singh Batty. Singh Batty dances away in towards his own red corner. John Cooney, a left, as we come into the final 10 seconds. John Cooney, a couple of very good, that's a good combination, he says it's he certainly has rattled Singh Vadi with that combination. He comes forward, we come to the end of round number four with John Cooney clearly in front on all scorecards.
on five of this super feather scheduled eight rounder. John Clooney versus Sandy Singh Vadi. That's super featherweight. John Clooney, who is certainly in control of this bout so far. Singh Vadi backs away at John Clooney with that right jab at Southpaw stance. Coming forward, Singh Vadi moves away, but John Clooney knows he's in control. A very good, a good right. A couple of combinations from John Clooney. Lands it on the arm of Singh Vadi, but they do send him backwards. Singh Vadi acknowledges the punch as Clooney comes forward again. A long right from Singh Vadi. Who is covered up? Uses the right. Changes his stance left from Singh Vadi. They're in the center of the ring. No movement from Singh Vadi. John Cooney trying to work his way through, trying to look for a way to maybe finish this fight inside the records at eight rounds. Singh Vadi walks onto a left hand from Cooney. Some good work from Cooney there. Singh Vadi retaliates with a good right hand from John Cooney. This is the second minute of the round. Singh Vadi. Not really offering much at this in this round. He is moving around. He's attempting to lead with that left jab. A kind of a chopping left from him there. More of a slap than a, than a jab, but Cody slips away. And again, regains control. Two jabs unanswered from Cody. A wild left from Cody. Sigmari with a right that did connect to the jaw of Cody, but John Cody puts a three-punch combination together that again... Doesn't seem to knock a lot out of Singh Baddy, although at times he does look quite fatigued. But Cooney is in control of this bout. Of that, there is little doubt. John Cooney getting some excellent encouragement from the crowd here in Leisureland. We're sweating all the time. A lot of people here, of course, here in anticipation for Galway's Rising, the main event of the evening, which will see Kieran Malloy have his fifth professional fight, tops the bill of that. But here, John Cooney at super featherweight is trying to finish this fight. Had two very good shots from John Cooney right out of the jaws. Sanjeev Singh Vadi. Singh Vadi has got to be given credit for his courage. He's coming back. He's covered up, but he's got no answer to these combinations from John Cooney, who's now up on his toes as we reach midway through the final minute of the fifth round. John Cooney, two very works to the body. Singh Vadi back down to the ropes. Again, a good right from John Cooney. Singh Vadi is trying to cover up, trying to deflect those jabs, but Cooney's jab is getting through. And that these are a final 10 seconds of this round. And Cooney right above us there, John Cooney lands a left to the head, another left to the head of Singh Vadi in the final seconds of this round. And Singh Vadi applauds Cooney. He knows that Cooney is a classier boxer. And he's going, I think, John Cooney to a career record of 7 and 0. Round number six of this super featherweight battle between John Cooney from Galway here in Ireland and Sanjeet Singh Vadi from Chakur in India. There's no doubting that the Galway man is well ahead in the opening five rounds. Singh Vadi has been quite courageous. He's taken the best that John Cooney has thrown at him. But Cooney certainly on top, commanding the centre of the ring. That southpaw stance of Cooney as that slips away. A couple of big rounds needed from Singh Maddy if he's to trouble the, the judge, I would think, in this contest. As John Cooney lands a right once again to the jaw. Cooney, when he gets inside, is doing some excellent work. And is now mixing it in a couple of right shots at Cooney going for the juggler in the fire. Neutral corner, John Cooney leading with a right hand. Singh Maddy has taken some punishment already in this round as we come up to one minute in the sixth round. 
John Cooley from Galway. An undefeated record. And looking like retaining that undefeated record as he lands a left to Singh Valley, who is covering up. He's taking a lot of these blows in the song. Two of these gloves, he swings the right hand. Cooley ducks away, covers up, locks up Singh Valley. Cooley warned by the referee. He's warned. The referee is warning Cooley for, I would think, trying to pull it in Singh Valley. Couple of good right jabs from Cooney to get on the way again. A minute and 35 gone in the sixth round. John Cooney steps away from a swinging right hand from Singh Vadi, who's yet ready to land a telling blow in this contest. Just as we speak, he does land a right hand, deflected mostly by the glove of Cooney as Cooney puts together a, combina a right left combination, a good left to the jaw, right over us here in Leisureland. This Conlon boxing promoter event, the title Galway's Rising, which sees Kira Malloy top the bill a little bit later on. John Cooney doing his bit for the locals, certainly against Sanjeet Singh Vati here in this super featherweight contest. <laughs> Round number six, the crowd really behind John Cooney. This course is coming also live on ESPN Boxing, in association with Conlon Boxing and top rank promotions. Sig Valley throws out a right. Doesn't land. Some good right hands from John Cooley. Again, Cooley brings back, ducks underneath it. A couple of rights. A left over the top from Cooley. Tries to land with a good right out of the jaw of Sing Valley, who is coming back. He is taking a lot of punishment, but he is gutsy end game as we get to the final 10 seconds. John Cooney, again dominating this round. Six rounds down, and John Cooney certainly on top all the way. Round number seven of eight in this super featherweight bout here at Leisureland in Galway. The Galway Rising Bill promoted by Conlon Boxing in association with top rank promotions. Top of the bill, of course, is Kieran Malloy. And a little bit later on coming up, we have an Irish heavyweight title clash between Jamie Morrissey and Kevin Cronin. But in this super featherweight bout, bout number four on the bill. John Cooney from Galway at Super Feather, that Southpaw stance. They're certainly lording it here over a game Indian, it must be said, Sanji Singh Vati. Singh Vati, 15 bout career in eight and seven. Two of those eight wins being by the way of knockout. And Cody once again coming forward. With that southpaw lead dictating matters. He's been on top throughout this contest. Good left, Sigvati throws his arms open and he says, you didn't hurt me, but Cooney has been the dominant boxer. He backs him into the corner and a very good combination with John Cooney. A rich two swinging wild right hands from Sigvati, who has been hurt there. Cooney swings a wild right himself, but connects with a left. Center of the ring, round number seven, minute 22 gone. Sigvati back with a right hand, but John Cooney sticks out that right jab to move him away. Controlling the fight, John Cooney. Sing Vaddy smiles at Cooney. But John Cooney focused very much so. This eight round bout 
A step up for Cooney in distance. And he's taken it in his stride. Right over us here in our commentary position at the side of the ring. John Cooley steps away from a lunging left from Sanjeet Singh Vati. And Cooley, 2.20 gone in round seven. Seven of eight. The furthest Cooley would have gone in his professional career. Four lengths are right jabs from Cooley. Once again, he sticks out that right. That's Giving away a slight bit in height advantage, John Cooley, but controlling the fight. A combination from John Cooley. That lands. Again, a right. Final 10 seconds. Round number seven. John Cooley from Galway. Against Sanju Singh Vadi at Super Feather. It's all over. It's round seven of eight. Getting ready for the eighth and final round. They'll touch gloves. John Cooney asked the crowd for more. His hometown crowd is, he boxes now out of Galway. And away we go for the eighth and final round at Super Featherweight here in Netherland. On the Condon Boxing Bill, Galway's Rising, in association with top rank promotions. John Cooney, with a right hand, leading and leading this contest throughout the previous seven rounds. It's been a good controlled performance by Cooney. One has to give credit to his opponent, Sanjeet Singh Vadi from India, who's taken the best that Cooney can offer so far. Singh Vadi with a right hand, Cooney counteracts with a left right combination. Center of the ring, both fighters, Singh Vadi. Gloves right above his face. Cooney looks for that opening, trying to get that opening, trying to finish this inside the requisite eight rounds. He's got a minute and five, two minutes and five seconds to do so if he wishes. But John Cooney, so far, can be pleased with his night work. A good right, a left, lands on the gloves. That one gets through, that right hand gets through, and three shots, four shots get through. Singh Valley says he's not hurt, I think he is. A very good two, very a great uppercut for John Cooney. And Singh Valley is rattled in the center of the ring. John Cooney, perfect record so far, six and all. Oh. Most definitely on his way to 7 0. Good left hand from Cooney. And Singh Valley is covered up. He's just hanging on for dear life in the centre of the ring, in my view, in the eighth and final round. He won't go down easily, but John Cooney is in control of this fight as we reach the halfway mark in round number eight. Left hand from John Cooney. One punch from Singh Valley was a right hand. It didn't really land, it didn't cause John Cooney much trouble. A good right lands on the arm of. Singh Vadi, he swings out his left hand out of Sugar Ray Leonard, but John Cooney is not up for that sort of stuff. He just wants to get the job done. He ran a couple of good combinations for John Cooney, a good left hand that glances on the right eye of Sanjeet Singh Vadi. Singh Vadi knows into the final minute that only a KO will suffice, and he doesn't look to me to have that punch in him. John Cooney certainly knows that. A couple of very good, a very good shot by John Cooney. Puts Singh Vadi back towards that blue corner. Singh Vadi says, I'm not hurt. But John Cooney, to the shouts of Cooney Cooney from the locals, back in control. 30, just over 30 seconds to go in the final round with what looks like another career success for John Cooney. Going to make it 7-0. It will go to be 8-8 eight and eight for Sanjeet Singh Vadi. John Cooney, final 20 seconds of this super feather 
eight rounder here in Legendland in Galway. John Cooley lands a right. Sig Valley throws his arms down by his sides and says, Come on, a bit of a low blow from Cooney, but final 10 seconds. And John Cooney will finish with a flourish here. A very good left hand on John Cooney as we come to the end of this super final with bout. And well done, John Cooney, most definitely a clear cut victor in that super feather contest. He embraces Sanjeet Singh Vadi. Probably the liveliest contest of the night so far. Singh Vadi.
for Belfast, Kurt Walker here. As he's now brought for the final instructions in the centre of the ring. He takes on Rodrigo de Oliveira. We get away on the round one. On one of eight of this featherweight bout between Kurt Walker, undefeated from Belfast in the north of Ireland. Again, Antas Rodrigo Gomez de Oliveira from Brazil. The Brazilian comes here with a four and two, six bout record. Two of those four victories by way of KO as Kurt Walker goes to work already. One of those five victories for Walker is a KO as he lands a decent right hand. Right up above us here. Kurt Walker in white and blue trunks is the black, white and gold of Dolivera. Walker with a slight, one would think, reach advantage. A couple of good combinations, a good left hand and followed by two right hands as Dolivera tries to come forward. Very high defence from Dolivera, low hand carriage from Walker. Right hand just under his chin. Comes forward with the left hand, tries to dictate terms of this contest in the opening round. Just over a minute into the opening round. As Kurt Walker, undefeated so far in his professional career. Takes it to Montes de Oliveira here in Leisureland and Galway. De Oliveira moves away from that right hand from, sticks out a left of his own. As Walker moves along the ropes, comes back, takes a left hand as we move halfway through the opening round. The first of eight, Kurt Walker from Belfast versus Rodrigo de Oliveira from San Sebastião in Brazil. De Oliveira coming forward now. But Walker works to the body, a left right. And slightly tall to just raise those. Left that left hand. A little more. But Walker works very good right hand, a very good combination from Walker. And Walker comes forward. Puts Dolivera on the back foot. Here as we go into the final minute of the first round here at Leisureland and Galway. Walker, crouched, right hand, trying to find a way through Dolivera's defence. Does so. Moves back, moves back along the ropes. Walker wants to keep this at long range in the early stages of this bout. Round one of eight. He's back in towards the red corner, but now steps away to the neutral corner as we hit the final ten seconds. But Kurt Walker, a good right hand to the body from Walker, and followed by another. And an opening round. First of eight, that I would think would go slightly in the favour of the Belfast man. He started the sharper, but Oliveira did try and come forward, but for me, Walker in control in that opening round. Round number two of this featherweight clash here in Leisureland and Galway on the Conlon boxing promotion Galway Rising. And of course association with top ranked promotions who last were associated with boxing in Ireland back in 1972. The great fight between Muhammad Ali and Al Blue Lewis at Crow Park that went 14 of the 15 scheduled rounds. Here in round two of a schedule eight round featherweight title. Kurt Walker from Belfast in control so far against... Montas de Oliveira 
from Brazil. A wild left hand from the Brazilian does it land. Goes into the salt hill air. As Walker, quite cagey as he's been through the opening. Four minutes of this contest. Dolivera, head bowed. Defence high. Tries to sneak away forward. Walker uses that long left jab, switches to a south boss tie for a couple of seconds. Gets a three punch combination through. A bit of a low blow from Walker. He's already been warned about them, but Dolivera continues on. Unfazed. Some good shots from Walker there. As they're right above us here in our commentary position on the neutral corner. Kurt Walker steps away from a couple of good shots from Dolivera. Probably his best couple of seconds of the contest so far, Dolivera. But left hand out again. Kurt Walker leads, works to the body. Doesn't get through. Dolivera ducking, diving, trying himself as Walker lands onto his just on the other side of his left eye. Walker proving elusive to the Brazilian as we step in to the final minute in round number two. Kurt Walker with another of these Michael Conlon organisation boxers who's finding his way through the professional ranks. Gradually, but going well. All going well so far. A good jab from Walker tries to get through the right to the body doesn't really land Dolivera ties him up towards the left centre of the ring good shot from Walker Dolivera retaliates with a left right of his own Walker right above us here in the neutral corner dashes away from a wild right hand from Dolivera didn't really connect Walker with two left so ducks and dives sitting on the ropes but Walker gets out of that little bit of a tricky situation. Dolivera coming forward again and right above us here in this neutral corner. A good right to the body from Kurt Walker. Dolivera looks a grizzled campaigner despite the fact he's only had six bouts. The end of round two. Kurt Walker going well so far. Round number three of eight of this featherweight clash here at Leisureland in Galway on the Conlon Boxing Promotion in association with Seven Bar here in Galway City and the top rank organisation. Kurt Walker from Belfast defending a professional record of 5 0 versus Santos de Oliveira from San Sebastião in Brazil. Six bouts for de Oliveira, unfortunately, has met defeat in two of those six. The two of his four victories have been by the way of knockout one of Kurt Walker's five by that same method. Walker in control of the fight, keeping it more or less at long range. Dolivera trying to wrap him up here over towards the red corner. From the centre of the ring, Kurt Walker comes forward. Wild from Dolivera, he gets a little bit off balance. Walker retaliates, comes through. With a right hand, a left to the body and a left to the jaw from Walker. Dolivera steps back, comes forward himself. A bit of retreating action from Walker, but nothing wrong. As Dolivera maybe senses he's behind on the referee scorecard and thinks he's got to do something about this to redress the balance. Comes forward. Walker ducks, dives, moves around the ring, using the ring to his advantage. Kurt Walker. 
Duck some dives in the neutral corner. Fresh air shot from the Brazilian. A good right uppercut from Kurt Walker. That steadies the Brazilian's progress in the center of the ring. D'Oliveira now coming with that left hand. He's crouched. A little bit of swelling around the lip of the Brazilian. The upper lip, that is. Walker at the moment, unscathed. Walker with a left hand. A wild right from the Brazilian, a right to the jaw of the Brazilian from Walker. A left-right combination that does land both of them. He ducks and dives, he sits again on the ropes. Ducks and dives his way out of it, in control. Very mobile Walker is further away from Belfast. Who lands a right to the body of D'Oliveira. D'Oliveira having his best spell. Deep in the final minute of the third round. Came forward there with a left-right combination himself. Walker ties him up. The referee will ask him to split, and it's in the centre of the ring again. A good right from Kurt Walker as D'Oliveira comes forward. He walks on to a glancing blow from Walker that didn't really cause the Brazilian much trouble. But it did land. A left, slightly off target from Walker. It's right above us here on the left-hand side as they go in towards the red corner. Walker tries to accommodate him into the final five seconds of the third round. A good, good uppercut from D'Oliveira, but Walker in control. Going up towards the halfway point of the, of the contest. And Kurt Walker sitting over in the blue corner. As above us to the left, in the red corner, Juan does Rodrigo Gomez D'Oliveira to give him his full title, gets his instructions. He has, stand, he has stood at each interval, whereas Walker takes the comfort of the ringside seat. This is bout number five of seven. Next up, of course, is a 10-rounder for the BUI Irish light heavyweight title. It promises to be a cracker between Limerick's Jamie Morrissey and Kevin Cronin from Kerry. Next up, round number four. Kurt Walker is up and ready to go. Pontus Oliveira comes from the corner on my left as I speak to you. That's the red corner. That is the corner where Fernando Mosquera will come from in tonight's main event, the Galway Rising event, where Kira Malloy will return home. About Malloy has been looking forward to ever since he's returned professional. A former Irish champion, of course, has a massive following in his own native Uchtarard and all along the west coast of Ireland. And indeed, throughout the country, he's gaining a bit of a cult status in boxing. But here in this featherweight title, it's Kurt Walker that's hoping to please his following who've travelled here from Belfast to support the featherweight as he takes on Juantas Oliveira in this contest. Walker ahead on the scorecards as we speak. We're in the fourth round. We're 45 seconds into that round. We're live on ESPN in association with Conlon Boxing and Top Rank Promotions. Of course, the big fight sponsored by the Seven Bar here in Galway. That is Kieran Malloy's main sponsor. A good left hand from Kurt Walker. Lands out of the jaw of D'Oliveira. Now he puts D'Oliveira on the back foot. D'Oliveira, to his credit, comes back forward, comes forward. Hands raised high. Right hand held above his chin. Punches onto the gloves of Walker as Walker is as slippery as an eel as he moves left and he moves right. D'Oliveira is coming at him. He knows he's behind. He lands a couple of good shots onto the face of Kurt Walker. But Walker is able to slip away and again take command. A good right. He leads off. He slips away once again. Walker ducking. And the blue and white trunks, Walker. The black, white and gold of D'Oliveira. Walker lands a left to the lower body of D'Oliveira as they step away. D'Oliveira comes forward. A wild left hand from D'Oliveira, but a right hand that did land prior to that. And Walker has probably took as much punishment in this round as he has of any of the preceding rounds. But again, Walker steps away. We're into the final 10 seconds of the round. Final half minute, sorry, of the round. Walker 
But it just needs to come back. Good right hand, a good left that follows up from Walker. Dolivera lands it right to the shoulder of Walker. They follow him around the ring. Walker slips away. But Dolivera, to his credit, is coming forward in this round. And by far, his best of the contest so far. They're over on the far side of the ring. Walker again tends to sit on the ropes, ducks and dies, covers up well, then lands a left to get out of trouble as the referee slips inside himself. We now hit the final 10 of this round. A wild right hand from D'Oliveira. He goes after his man. Walker ties him up. A good left from a good right from Walker finishes the round. And that fourth round might just have went the way of D'Oliveira. It was certainly his best of the four. As the huge attendance here in Leisureland greets the ring ladies who tell us that the next round will be round number five. Referee clearing some water from the floor here at Leisureland. Just between rounds there, we noticed a slight nick on the eye of Kurt Walker. He's round his cornerman working hard on just over the right eye. It may have came from the glancing blow from D'Olivera. But Walker comes forward here, now gone to a southpaw stance for the opening part of this round. With 29 seconds into the fifth round. Oliveira certainly coming back. A good shot from Walker. We need to keep this at long range. One would think to let that eye settle. Oliveira, who had by far his best round in the previous, the fourth round. And, mo and most people would have the opinion that that was a round for the Brazilian. But back here in Leisureland, in the Conlon Boxing Bill, in association with Bob Arum's top rank promotions. Kurt Walker from Belfast and Hontas Oliveira from Brazil. In this featherweight bout, the fifth of seven. Next up, the Irish light heavyweight belt up for grabs in what promised to be a cracker between Jamie Morrissey and Kevin Cronin. A real humdinger and a great curtain raiser for the main event itself, featuring Galway's own Kieran Maloney. Oliveira coming forward as we've reached just after the halfway mark in the fifth round. A good left from Walker. It was a lunging left, but he made contact with the face of Oliveira. A left and right that don't really land from Walker, but he must gain, regain control of this contest, one would think. And certainly, the Brazilian came forward and came forward well in the previous round. They're locked up there. Walker tied up the Brazilian. Probably growing in confidence as Walker lands a left. Needs to land more than that though, one would think. Low left hand from Walker. Comes forward, head bowed. They tie up, the referee will split, ask them to split. And he'll give a slight warning to both. That good left hand from Walker lands on the chin of the Brazilian, who's unfazed, but it was a good shot. It hit the target. Maybe need a little bit more power. But Walker moving away, using the ring, comes forward again with a left hand, jabs out that Zopa right hand, a good left hand from Dolivera, very good right hand from Dolivera, right above us here in Legendland of Galway. A very good section of the fight from the Brazilian, who landed with a couple of decent blows. We hit the final 10 seconds in round number five. Walker ducks over, over his own corner, the blue corner. Moves it back towards the neutral, but now back in the centre of the ring, and we finish round number five. It was a very even round, one would think. Could have went either way. I leave that to the judge, because certainly, Quantas Oliveira 
in the last two rounds has come forward quite strongly as we watch the cornermen work on that slight opening in the right eye above the right eye of Kurt Walker. Are they telling him he's got to work harder? But Walker is certainly getting the riot at Red Troop in his own corner. He needs to come forward as the seconds are asked to vacate the ring. Round number six of eight in this featherweight contest here at the Conlon Boxing Promoted event, the Galway Rising event here in Leisureland and Salt Hill in Galway. And this featherweight bout, Hunter Stolivera coming forward, has had the best of the exchanges for the last two rounds. But certainly, Kurt Walker, who had been working well earlier, needs to regain control of this contest. A packed attendance here at Leisureland. All the latecomers are virtually in, and they're here in anticipation of a great performance from their own. And that young man, of course, is Kieran Malloy from Uchtarard, formerly of Uchtarard Boxing Club, now part of the Michael Conlon organisation, has been in trading with Elgar Fernandez in Lockbury University in the UK, preparing for tonight's fight. In this featherweight fight bout, though, it's certainly got interesting the last couple of rounds. Oliveira may not have the power of Walker, but he's certainly landing a couple of punches. He is coming forward, he's determined, and he's dogged, to say the least. Walker covers up. Trying to protect that right eye. He's right over us here in the neutral corner. Oliveira not really landed. A very good left hand from Walker. He needs him. He needs more of that though. Oliveira goes with a long left hand over the top. A good shot from Walker. Oliveira though not phased by the work of the Belfast man, who moves back to the centre of the ring, trying to keep it at long range. Moves away. Paws out the left hand. Sticks out the left hand again. Right over us here in our commentary position. A good right from Walker doesn't really have the meat to cause the Brazilian trouble. Minute 48 in the sixth round. They're locked up again. Dolomera through vociferous encouragement from his corner. Comes forward, but Kurt Walker lands four unanswered punches. A very good right hand that came across and certainly troubled the Brazilian. But again, the Brazilian, his good right hand lands on the gloves of the Belfast man. Walker, a good inside right uppercut, right uppercut, that did land on the meat, and the Brazilian felt that. Walker, though, covering up, protecting that right eye. It doesn't seem to have got much worse, but a good shot, a very good shot from the Brazilian, and a very good left hand from the Brazilian. It's getting scrappy above us. Walker needs to bring this back to a, a long-range fight. The Brazilian is hounding him down. The Brazilian is on top again in this round. He's forcing the issue. He's forcing Walker to retreat. Walker again is elusive. But he wouldn't want to get careless as we hit the final 10 seconds. A very good right hand from Walker. An excellent, another excellent right hand. Coming late in this round. Kurt Walker certainly rising to the occasion. And at the end of that round, Walker may have done enough to shade it, but it was certainly a round where the sixth of eight, that's the Brazilian Oliveira, most definitely forced the issue in the opening two minutes of that round. An ultimate round coming up, round number seven. <laughs> round number seven of eight in this featherweight contest on the Conlon Boxing Promoted Bill here in Leisureland in Galway. 
Kurt Walker from Belfast. 5 and 0. Carlos de Oliveira, 4 and 2, from his 6th bout career. The Brazilian came forward in the last couple of rounds. But in this penultimate round, Kurt Walker, I would think, needs to return to the Kurt Walker of rounds number 2 and 3, most definitely. De Oliveira got a bit of encouragement in the previous two rounds, has come forward. One wonders, has he the power though? His punches don't seem to pack power. But let's not speak too soon. As Walker returns again, the left jab. Sticking it out, center of the ring. Good shot of the body for Kurt Walker. Walker, a very good uppercut, landed on the chin of the Brazilian. And certainly send him back. That left jab also landed on his chin. Walker ducks and dives. Ducks inside the attack of the Brazilian as the referee parts the boxes. Center of the ring. Good shots, good three punch combination from Walker. But at least land it. Dolivera comes forward, sticks out a left jab. A good right from, Do from Walker. A left that was stopped by the glove of the Brazilian. Kurt Walker with a very good left hand. Again, the left hand, the second left hand lands on the gloves of the Brazilian. Right above us here, the Brazilian coming forward, but Kurt Walker steps away, goes back over towards the red corner. The referee now speaking to Walker. And give him a little warning. The Brazilian complaining to the referee, but they're back at it, and we're two, over two eight of the second round. The second penultimate round, the seventh of eight. Got an excellent right shot to below the left eye of the Brazilian from Walker. Needed to follow that up, has followed her up with a right to the body of the left that landed to the glove of the, the Brazilian, protecting his jaw. Walker again shapes, moves away, dances along, moves, dances right in front of us, moves left and right, slips. An attack from Dolivera. Dolivera now has him in the corner. But Walker slips away. Maybe Walker is regaining control of this contest, but it is two big rounds for Walker, I would feel. Need it. He's certainly going well in this seventh, but Dolivera again attacks as we hit the final 10 seconds of the seventh round. Honda's Dolivera certainly not letting the Brazilian flag down. As Kurt Walker lands a beautiful right hand right above us. But again, they lock horns and the referee splits them. And we look, I would think, they'd have a fantastic, we look to have a fantastic final round of wearing us. They touch gloves for the eighth and final round of this featherweight battle between Brazilian Jose Rodrigo Gomez de Oliveira and Belfast Kurt Walker. Walker ahead on the cards, one would think, heading into the final round, but de Oliveira has certainly come back into the fight in the latter half of the, game, the scrap. But one would think that Walker regained control there in the seventh round. Dolivera, who knows he needs a big final round, is coming forward. Right above us here, Dolivera would try the left-right combination. There's no real power in either punch, though, as Walker slips away. Comes back himself with a left, a good left, a couple of jabs that do land. A left to the body that also landed. Being urged on by his supporters ringside. Walker, who, to his credit, has protected that slight cut above the right eye to great effect in the 
proceeding rounds, although he has landed and caught with a shot there right above us. He catches Dolavera back himself with a left hand, but he needs to slip away from that corner. His right hand high to cover that eye. Dolavera coming forward, a couple of good punches from Dolavera, left and right. Did land on the body of Walker, but one would think caused a little damage. The spray comes from both fighters as they get a very good straight right hand from Walker. That's a lot better from the Belfast man. Midway through the final round of eight. And this featherweight battle as Dolavera comes forward. And the Brazilian certainly knows that he may need a knockout in this final round. And he's certainly got in search of it. But whether he has the actual power to, to dispatch Walker is another thing. Walker dances and smiling. But Dolavera comes back at him in this neutral corner right above us. Now in the red corner as he dances over towards the blue corner Walker Walker back in the centre of the ring Dolavera comes forward again they're above us Walker with a left that does land but no real menace in the punch locked up over the neutral corner Walker is covered up slips away but Dolavera is doing the pressing in this latter part of the final round inside the last 40 seconds of it intriguing rounds of boxing at the featherweight division Kurt Walker of Belfast, undefeated, versus Juntas Oliveira from Brazil. The Brazilian certainly just hasn't come here for the fresh air. He's putting up a very good battle, and Walker might just be slightly be ahead. Walker steps away, he jaws at the Brazilian. He tends to move away, tries to keep it at long range, turns his man. A right and a wild left from Oliveira. Again, the referee calls him to split. We're into the final 10 seconds, and Kurt Walker might just about preserve, one would think. With a little bit of comfort, his unbeaten record, although credit must be given to the Brazilian, who has put up a tremendous battle here at Featherweight in Leisureland and Galway.
And now I'll introduce the opponent across the ring in the blue corner, officially landing at 79.1 kilos. He brings to the ring a perfect professional record of 5 0 with 1 KO. Tonight wearing white and green shorts. Ladies and gentlemen, from Limerick Island, he is the reigning Celtic Light Heavyweight Champion. Please welcome Jamie Morrissey. If he will now give his final instructions to the boxer. Both guys are really up for this. There's, there's no there's no need for motivation here this evening. You well, can see Morrissey, it their eyes. You certainly can. Morrissey, boxing out of the blue corner. We're on our left hand side, Kevin Cronin. As Morrissey comes forward wearing the white trunks with Morrissey and Blazon on the rear of them. Caroline on the front. Cronin with a flashy white trunks with green trim as well and of course the gold of the kingdom emblazoned on the front the kingdom of Kerry versus Limerick the home they say of Irish rugby and a lot more beside as they come forward Morrissey coming forward Morrissey right above us here now Cronin ducks and dives, a good left from Cronin. Cronin comes forward, Morrissey retreats out of the ropes, comes forward himself with the left hand. Cronin. Just above us. Morrissey steps away. Morrissey with a slight height advantage over Cronin. Cronin, a wide left hand, doesn't connect. And Morrissey trying to boss this fight now. Comes that long left hand. They say would have all just that slight reach advantage over his opponent. As Sean said, they've put up a tremendous battle in Belfast. They're a new rivalry, but this time for the Bacon Irish BUI light heavyweight title. Jamie Morrissey from Limerick and Kevin Cronin from Kerry. Morrissey, white gloves. Cronin with the darker gloves in the centre of the ring. Morrissey slightly enjoying maybe the better of exchanges early on. Lands with a good left hand, but Cronin retaliates with a good right himself. And a left followed by another right, and a chopping right hand. Cronin in the centre of the ring. Morrissey comes forward with a long lead, a left jab, a right cross that doesn't really land. Lands onto the gloves of Cronin. Cronin backs into the corner. Morrissey comes forward. The referee closely by a good right hand from Jamie Morrissey. Kevin Cronin regroups, steps back away, but Morrissey coming forward with the left hand. Cronin tries to duck inside, a good right hand from Cronin, get tangled up, the referee will ask them to split. In this the opening round, the first of ten rounds. Jamie Morrissey from Limerick. The man with that slight read and height advantage. Goes forward the left, the right that to the body, but it doesn't cause Cronin any grief. A good right hand from Morrissey. Cronin loses his balance more than anything as he step back. Morrissey paws out that long left hand. The white gloves. We hit the final 10 seconds in round number one. That's one of ten. Five and one. Career record of Morrissey, five and one for Cronin. A very good first round, Sean Clancy. A uh, great start. Yeah, I think uh, Morrissey's reach advantage there in the first round. Picked the cleaner punches and probably would have edged it. Uh, just to say, this bout would have sold out on its own. It would have filled an arena on its own. And unfortunately for the people of Kerry and Limerick, they had to come in on another card to Kieran Malai where it was sold out three hours before it went on sale at all. So yeah, uh, just for me, Morrissey was just picking the straighter punches. Cronin with the, the height disadvantage has to work that little bit harder, slip to try and get under and get in at Morrissey. But uh, great fight. It Both is. of them settled in straight away. We've had a good build so far, Sean. The previous battle between uh, John, John Co um, Kurt Walker and Dolivera from Brazil was a good scrap. John Cooney 
Thanks. Well, well, to take care of Sing Maddie. We've had some good fights so far. Absolutely. And often when people bring journeymen into town to box, they only want the money and go. We've seen here this evening all these journeymen stayed in the ring and, 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 and fought hard. Yeah, it certainly did. Round number two of ten for the Irish, the vacant BUI Irish light heavyweight title. Jamie Morrissey, slightly ahead maybe in the opening round of the card of Sean Clancy and maybe many more here. But it's early days yet as we hit the first 20 seconds in round number two. Kevin Cronin, as the referee has... Forgot the gum forgot shield. Forgot his gum shield. <laughs> My God. The referee holds him and asks them to come together again. Kevin Cronin. Jamie Morrissey, the bearded figure of Jamie Morrissey. With that reach advantage, white gloves, Morrissey, but standing. Good shot from Morrissey, oh, two very good shots from Morrissey. Great backhand. Coming forward, a good right hand from Morrissey. Calls out the left jab, long left jab, goes to the body, doesn't land. Long left again from Mar Morrissey. Cronin waits, tries to come forward. Needs to get inside, wants to make this fight at close quarters but Morrissey draws out the left hand and again dances away in the centre of the ring is Cronin with Morrissey coming forward swings a wild right hand doesn't connect with the left hand and a beautiful right hand right above us under the chin of Kevin Cronin and Kevin Cronin is holding on here he just needs to get a bit of a breather into himself as Jamie Morrissey with that good start and that reach advantage comes forward a good left again for Morrissey Cronin just trying to take a moment, just trying to get through this round. It comes a good combination from Kevin Cronin, a good uppercut with no real power there behind it from Morrissey. But Cronin is breathing slightly heavier than Morrissey, and Morrissey comes forward. A good shot from Morrissey. Cronin asks the, the referee is his opponent holding on but Morrissey good left from Kevin Cronin his first punch he has landed in this round a good right swing and right from Morrissey but Cronin slips away from it as we reach 2 minutes and 30 seconds in round number 2 Jamie Morrissey from Limerick going forward lands a couple of punches on the Cronin a good right hand a very good right hand from Kevin Cronin that certainly rocked Morrissey right here above us Already Cronin's nose showing the scars of battle. As Morrissey has landed onto it and lands again with a left hand. Into the concluding stages of round number two. As Jamie Morrissey comes forward, Cronin swings. Morrissey connects, again, connects with a left again. Cronin retaliates with a left as we go to the final ten seconds. Some blood coming from the nose area of Kevin Cronin. A great shot for Cronin, but retaliated Morrissey. And we finish a dramatic second round. And that's Sean Clancy. is the best round of boxing we've seen here in Leisureland tonight. Absolutely, yeah. Um, Morrissey started off strong. He landed some heavy punches on Cronin. Cronin seemed to slow down. He, he got his second breath. And he was working inside, and he was landing heavy punches. But again, I just think Morrissey with those longer exchanges. But uh, the power is coming from Cronin. He seems to be coming into the fight a bit better. And I suppose just for people at home as well, the heat in here tonight is quite really warm and for the boxers in the ring, that'll have a telling, telling as well as the, as the rounds go on, but uh, a much closer round this time. Cronin was more active and more successful, but again, I, I think Morrissey was, was the more successful. Yeah, Morrissey has started well, there's no doubt, but Kevin Cronin certainly landed some very good shots in that round. Third round upcoming, the third of ten. What boxers? Having their sixth professional fight. The perfect record for Jamie Morrissey. But Kevin Crowley with just that one defeat to Morrissey as the bell goes for round number three. Uh, Cracked and punch from uh, Morrissey there. From the start. Very early, a very good left and a right and to again. follow it. And another left and right combination. Morrissey is coming forward here early in the third round. Kevin Crowley is right above us here. Sponsored by Jimmy Breeds Barron. Jimmy Breeds Barron Killarney. But he's taking punishment right above us. Jamie Morrissey steps away. Cronin certainly knows 
that he's got to up his game. He has the heavier punch, one would think, but Morrissey is the, the slicker of the two in the opening two and a bit rounds we've had so far. They get quite tied together. The referee separates them. As we come to the end of the first minute in round number three. Morrissey seems to wrap up Cronin there under his arm. Yeah, smart tactic. When, when uh, Cronin came in there, he wrapped him up straight away no, so he no, couldn't get to work on him. Nothing sinister involved, though, but Morrissey showed his cuteness. Morrissey with the left hand coming forward. Both sets of supporters getting behind their men. And one could only think the roar that will greet this arena. It's shortly after 10 o'clock when Galway's own Kieran Malloy is due into the ring. But Shamey Morrissey coming forward here in round number three of this Irish light heavyweight title bout. Halfway through the third round, a good shot from Cronin, a very good shot from Cronin, retaliate, two good shots from Morrissey. That landed under the jaw of Cronin, but Cronin came back with a very good right hand. Morrissey, though, sticking out that left jab. Looks to shape for a right hand, a good right hand, and a very good follow-up from... Morrissey again they lock up Cronin ducks inside Morrissey wraps him up and Morrissey hit the oh, clash of heads clash of heads yeah. that's a nasty clash of heads nasty clash of heads but boxers sent to neutral corners as the referee will most likely call in the medical team to have a look Kevin Cronin may have suffered the worst of the damage he's telling the ref he's okay he I don't see any surface bleeding anyway at no, the moment it was just, a, just an accidental clash yeah. on one would think yeah the referee calls the boxers together again and is certainly living up to its bidding as a cracking Irish light heavyweight title fight from Limerick, Jamie Morrissey from Kevin, Kevin Cronin from the county of Kerry the All-Ireland hurling champions and it's the All-Ireland football champions but it's two gladiators in the ring here as Jamie Morrissey slightly ahead maybe on the scorecards comes forward again they wrap up Kevin Cronin slight clash of heads there again not the as serious as the first time no but they are getting about. Cronin wants to keep this at close quarters. He feels maybe he has the power. Morrissey content to try and keep it at long range and use that reach advantage. An uppercut from, from Morrissey. Two very good traits. A three punch combination. Four. Well answered from Jamie Morrissey. At five. At six. Right in front of us. Cronin steps away. Needs to regroup. But Morrissey certainly pushing home with the advantage as we come towards the end of the third round. Jamie Morrissey from Limerick and Kevin Cronin from the county of Kerry. Slight bit of show showboarding from Morrissey. He feels he's in charge. He certainly got the better of that round show. He does, and he's starting to look comfortable in there now as well. I know he did a bit of showy there at the end of the last round, but he, he's finding his rhythm, he's finding his groove, and uh, he still looks comfortable. He uh, does, yeah, he does, Sean, but Cronin seems to want to bring it to tight quarters. We've had a couple of clashes to the head, accidentally, as we say. Yeah. Cronin is more comfortable with it with tight. He just doesn't want to let Morrissey use that extended reach, take advantage and take control of the ring. Yeah, and the minute Cronin gets inside, Morrissey just ties him up and that's it. Streetwise. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Even for a guy of just, what, five uh, five professional fights, he's certainly showing that he's, he's learning all the time. Both boxers are, but it's certainly, he was a cracking guy. Round number four of a scheduled ten-round bout for the vacant Boxing Union of Ireland Light Heavyweight Championship between Limerick's Kevin, Limerick's Jamie Morrissey and Kerry's Kevin Cronin. Slightly ahead in our scorecards so far is Morrissey, who's content to keep the scrap at long range. Cronin working hard to try and get it in tight, but he's meeting stern resistance from Morrissey, who now left-hand lead in the centre of the ring. The darker shoes and the white gloves of Jamie Morrison. Takes it forward. Cronin looking for a way through that long reach advantage of Morrison. Morrissey dances away. Goes under the ropes to the far side of the ring. Goes over towards. Yeah, and Cronin just has to be a small bit patient to time his attacks. 
and I think he's been a bit more cautious, but that's because his corner's probably told him, you know, time it. Don't be risking by jumping in. You could get caught with a with, with strong punch. Just, also, and yeah. also when he's jumping in, Morris, he's tied him up. He certainly yeah. is at his, his wing craft to dominate the, the contest so far. Here we are deep in the second minute of round number four. Kevin Cronin coming forward in the centre of the ring. Jamie Morrissey, a couple of shots, a good, good combination from Cronin, has landed to the jaw of Morrissey. Morrissey steps away, but Cronin comes forward. Very industrious is Kevin Cronin. Morrissey, oh, a very good right hand, a beautiful right hand, right to the jaw, and Cronin is in a slight bit of trouble here as he holds on in the centre of the ring. That was a very good shot, Sean, from Jamie Morrissey. It was, and it, like Cronin switched off there for a second, and one place you can't switch off is in the ring. He should have seen that one coming. Yes, it was a very, very good straight right hand from Jamie Morrison, who is on top here in this round. Round number four. Again, Cronin ducks. Morrissey locks him up with a bit of a head, an arm lock. Oh, nice one on the left, left. Cronin. Uppercut from Cronin, and that has hurt Jamie Morrissey. Morrissey steps back, and he knows that Cronin has hit the target there. Cronin comes forward again. His eyes right on the target. Morrissey tries to knock up his arm again. Morrissey coming forward. A wild uppercut from Morrissey. Does it land? Cronin showing the scars of battle, but coming forward. Morrissey, a very good right hand for Morrissey. Retaliation comes from Cronin, but Jamie Morrissey landed a beautiful right hand right there to the jaw. Kevin Cronin. Cronin did retaliate a couple of inside punches from Cronin, but final 10 seconds of the fourth round. A very good like once again, Morrissey coming forward. Cronin has come gallantly this on and landed a couple of shots, but again, Morrissey holds on. And as we come to the end of the fourth round, Sean. That was a tight, tight round, George. It was very much so. Yeah. Again, though, Morrissey landed some telling blows. Cronin landed some himself also. But Morrissey seemed to be in control when he landed his shots. He moved away and came again. Yeah, yeah. And uh, like, I think the key to Cronin there was he was a bit more patient in this round and timed his attacks more. But more. again, yeah. he, did, he gave Morrissey one chance. Yeah. And yes. Morrissey took it. It certainly is developing into an excellent bounce. But he, he felt there in that round when he caught uh, Morrissey with the hooks. They had him in trouble. And he, he tried to throw a couple of combinations again, but you know, Morris is wise. He's, he's very streetwise. Yeah, he yeah. knows how to tie the fight up. He's, he's in control, maybe of the mental battle as well, is he out there? Yeah, yeah. And uh, I tell you, Leisureland is getting some treat this evening. It certainly is. Yeah, and yeah. Packed house here. Basically, standing room only. <laughs> Round number five. That's five of ten. We're coming towards the halfway stage in this Irish light heavyweight title bout for the vacant belt, the BUI belt for the Limericks, Jamie Morrissey and Kerry's Kevin Cronin Morrissey doing probably the better work but Cronin certainly is not out of this scrap it's got close quarters and it's Cronin who's trying it inside but once again Morrissey is using his ring craft to tie this up and slow it down and let it, the referee split them and try and bring it to oh, long range again. caught there again with the backhand and I can hear his yes. corner, I can hear his corner out the corner of my ear shouting over your head, and that's yeah. good advice. It is, it is, because Morrissey is getting dangerous now, Sean. He's certainly landing the more, more of the punches. The right from Cronin was, it looked like a right in desperation more than anything. The vacant Irish light heavyweight title at stake between Jamie Morrissey and Kevin Cronin. He needs to tighten that belt. defense, George. He certainly does. He's right above us here, and Morrissey works inside as the spray greets us right here in the commentary position. Kevin Cronin coming forward. But Morrissey. Tight battle. Morrissey, again, ring craft cuteness. Cronin supporters are certainly giving him every bit of encouragement that they can. But Morrissey lands a left to the face, and a beautiful right hand from Morrissey. That had rocked Cronin, and Cronin looks, if anything, to be coming off worse of the battle here. He tells the referee that 
He's opponent gum is shield on. Morrissey has the gum shield out now. Gum shield is out. I don't know, is that a tactic or a trick or did know, you just fall out? It might be, you know, I don't think so, Sean. Yeah. It just seemed to come out when they were trying to engage. The referee gives, asked for the gum shield to be clean. Yeah, Morrissey was remonstrating with the ref and just as he, he, he was speaking, the gum shield popped out. I think you're right, again, uh, George. Yeah. Again, though, Morrissey did land with the better shots there in, just prior to the little interval. Yeah. But the referee asked both boxers again to come to the centre of the ring and resume battle. And Kevin Cronin comes in with a right hand. But once again, Morrissey ties him up. Yeah. Cronin has his arms outstretched, telling the referee, I'm being held. At but some stage, the ref is going to have to say... The referee has to do yeah. something, but at this stage, it's wing craft and it's cuteness and it's true oh. operation for Morrissey. But Cronin lands a beautiful shot to the head of Morrissey. This time, Morrissey has reason to wrap him up. But Cronin is certainly... Still leading in on Cronin, binding down on top of him, he pushing is, his head to the ground. Shrewd. Again, yeah. now the referee, it, it's not far maybe from the referee giving him a stern talking to. As we step into the latter stages of this round, Jamie Morrissey keeping it in a long range, Kevin Cronin coming back for all its worth. A wide left hand from Cronin doesn't connect anywhere here. Morrissey connects with a left and a right. Kevin Cronin's corner still advising him. But Morrissey is on his toes. Cronin, if anything, getting onto the flat feet in the centre of the ring as Morrissey sticks out a left jab that does land. As we come to the final stages of this round. Fifth of ten. We'll go the distance. Only time will tell. Big uppercut there for Morrissey again. Another very, very good round. Another very, very good round, but... One would think, Sean, as the ring ladies tell us, the next round was round number six. The music players in the background. But to me, as we look over at Jamie Conlon and Michael Conlon, they're happy with what they've seen so far. Yeah, he says very close. They're, they're saying 3-2, and he's boxing at the distance, going and trying to get in and close the distance, yeah. To me now, Morrissey has the punches, yeah. the range of punches. <laughs> Morrissey has the range of punches. Anytime Cronin tries to go in low, he's coming with an uppercut yeah. for a tall man. So, in fairness to Cronin, he's trying to get in, but he's getting picked to the head, he to the is. body. Yeah. And whilst Morrissey is throwing the, the harder shots, he's also very shrewd. Yeah. He knows where to tie it up. So, Jimmy Collins calling a 3 2 to Morrissey. He just flagged over for there, George. Well, that's in Jimmy. He'd know a bit more than me, I'd say. I know, but that's Jimmy's <laughs> scorecard, but his scorecard won't count tonight. <laughs> for this vacant boxing out of our BOI Irish light heavyweight title. Jamie Morrissey from Limerick versus Kerry's Kevin Cronin. Both wearing white trunks, both spattered with the red banner. With the white gloves, Jamie Morrissey. The darker gloves, Kevin Cronin, who has Morrissey pinned back in his own corner. Again, Morrissey shrewd, but Cronin comes forward with a left hand, yeah. and he's now telling the referee that every time he comes forward, he's being tied up. By a very good left good to body, the body punch. shot. Right to the rib cage, it landed up. Jamie Morrissey and I think Morrissey felt that shot yeah absolutely and that's the key the key to a tall man is body punches to yes. get him to lower down to your level it certainly is and Cronin giving away maybe 2-3 inches of advantage in height and in fairness George Cronin should have maybe started with that earlier on, on the bout like this is round uh, 6 and he's only going to the body now he, he should have tried that tactic earlier on he certainly sh he should have but Morrissey was controlling the fight earlier yeah. if anything Morrissey is on the back foot of this round. Again, holding. They hold. Cronin is trying to force the referee's hand here. Shrewd himself. But Jamie Morrissey is back in the centre of the ring. Left hand for Morrissey. Once again, this bout for the vacant Irish light heavyweight title. The referee is certainly working overtime at the centre of the ring to keep these boxes split. But as we look up, a good right from Jamie Morrissey. Just about lands a wild left hand. Cronin working to the ribcage around the back of Morrissey. But Morrissey has him tied up. Cronin is on his toes again. And has come forward. It's a very good round for Kevin Cronin. But Morrissey responds. Sixth round. Sixth of schedule 10 for the vacant Irish light heavyweight title. A very good right hand from Jamie Morrissey. A good left from Morrissey. Cronin responds.
the crowd getting behind their respective fighters. Morrissey comes forward with a low left to the body, swings. Cronin Cunt with a good right hand over the top and lands on the jaw of Morrissey. Getting success he felt inside. That. Yeah, he's getting success. He felt that. It's a good, but very good period of the fight for Kevin Cronin. Cronin is now on the front foot. He's back dictating the fight. But Morrissey retaliates, but Cronin's jaw takes one a right hand over the top from Morrissey. But Cronin comes back with a left oh hand and a right. God. Couple of great punches. He's in a six toe to toe. Toe to toe in the is an absolute. Total to so right to the center of the line. Both boxers going out at each other. A short body. Just I know it's getting a bit, getting a bit tasty at the end of the round there. Is, Sean. Cronin didn't like that. No, Marcy's no, 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 it is, it is ridiculous, but maybe Sean, is that a sign that Jamie Morrissey now knows he's in a big battle for the Irish title? For sure. Cronin, yeah. I think Cronin got that round. Certainly, I think Cronin has weathered that mid, mid fight storm. He was certainly behind early in the contest, but he is come back and he ain't afraid of Morrissey. He may be giving away a couple of inches, but Cronin certainly got the better of the exchanges there, and Morrissey, I think that was more. I won't say in desperation, but it was a bit of defiance to say that I'm not hurt. But I think that Cronin certainly hit the target on a number of occasions. Absolutely. And just for people at home, the two men stood. There was about 30 seconds left in that last round. They stood up facing each other and called each other on. And then just Morrissey put that fist in the air, which uh, added insult injury for Cronin. But Cronin gave a good answer back. He a certainly did. Combination punches. And now we come to round number seven. As the, the referee brings the boxers to the centre of the ring. Seven of ten for the vacant Irish light heavyweight title. From Limerick, the bearded Jamie Morrissey. From the county of Kerry, the blonde-haired Kevin Cronin. Cronin. Trying to work to the body right above us. Morrissey wants to keep this scrap, certainly for the early stages of this seventh round, at a bit of distance. Cronin, one would think, right on by that show, but beautiful shot right above us oh, from Kevin Cronin. And that hurts. Jamie Morrissey, Morrissey not as elusive this time, not slipping away much, trying to come out and go toe to toe with Cronin. But the more this box, this becomes a scrap, the more it's suiting Cronin. Morrissey now back in towards his own corner, the blue corner over the far side of the ring. In this Conlon boxing promoted top in association with top rank, Galway's rising bill, here in Leisureland in Salt Hill in Galway. Some good shots there. Tied up again. From Morrissey, who ties up Cronin. But Cronin has taken the best that Morrissey has thrown at him tonight. Morrissey now with a bit of swelling underneath the right eye. Oh. Lands on Cronin. And that was a very good punch from Jamie Morrissey. And Cronin is hurt. There's Cronin this time. Dangerous with the, the heads decides. again there, uh, George. I'd say the clutch. The clash Slide. there, they had their backs to us, but it looked like a head clash game. And a slight bit of damage over the right eye of Kevin Cronin now. As yeah. well as oh. the blink, that's looked like a last blow. the rest said stop. Yes. Under the belt as well, Taz. That is a warning, that is a deduction, I think. Yeah. It's a point deduction, I think the referee is correct there, Sean. Yeah, absolutely. He hears him after the belt, but under the belt. Or after he said stop, he hears him, and he hit him below the belt as well. The referee asked Kevin Cronin if he is OK. Yeah. The crowd are not happy with that, no. Morrissey responds with a very good right hand to the jaw of Cronin. A beautiful left hand from Cronin, but again Morrissey ties him up inside when he comes forward. Mor Morrissey's height advantage. Allowing him to keep it at distance. But Cronin is coming forward. And coming forward at every opportunity. Kevin Cronin, as it says on his shorts, see the warrior, the kingdom warrior, Kevin Cronin, and that he certainly is. Of the two boxes, he may look more, worse for wear in the center of the ring, but he's given as good as he, he's getting. Morrissey with a good left hand, ships away again. And a good punch shot is gone again. Gone again. That, that was from a punch that time. Yes. Yeah. The gum shield is gone. That's the second time we've one occasion where Cronin came out without his gum shield. And on two occasions has left them out. The crowd think this is I think another time if it comes out, that's the one in George. Yes. Yeah. He must keep that gum shield in. It's a green gum shield signifying the county of Limerick. Morrissey oh, comes nice forward. Oh, nice from Cronin. But Cronin comes back at him again with a right hand. Goes a right to the body. 
and Crowland certainly coming forward well in this round. Coming to the, the latter stages of this round. Of course, we did have a stop, stoppage for the warning and also for the drum shoot. Last Final 10, 10 seconds of the seventh round of a thoroughly entertaining Irish line having a title point between Kevin Corden from Kerry and Jamie Morrissey. Another very close round. Another very close round. And now I would think stamina is coming into it because with the breaks and all, we were only three, three minutes and 35 seconds in that round with, with the breaks drawn for the warning and all that. And the... The um, stop for the drum machine, but it's a very, very close back. Very close now. Very close. And, uh, you know, you can't take your eyes off it. Uh, both boxers, Cronin... Looks the worst for wear, but there's still the energy in him there when he wants to go on an attack. When he gets inside, those punches that he landed are they are heavy. Yeah. There's more, there's more, there's certainly more power coming to the punches of yeah. Kevin Cronin. Under the jaw, under the body, swelling under Morrissey's eye there now. Yes. It's the corner uh, treatment. Yeah. He also had a bit of a, a swelling underneath the right eye early in or late in the fifth round. Round number eight of ten scheduled rounds for the vacant Irish right heavyweight title. Straight, 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 straight into Corlin. Comes out with all guns blazing right over his own corner. The Kingdom Warrior, Kevin Corlin. His supporters urging him on as Morrissey comes out. And a beautiful left hand from Corlin. And landed over the jaw. This is the going to go toe to toe again in the centre of the ring. Oh, they're both locked up. The referee separates the gladiators right in the centre of the ring. Kevin Cronin, a beautiful right hand to the jaw. And right under there where Jamie Morrissey is in trouble. Underneath that eye is the Morrissey's corner shouting that they've got to be split. Kevin Cronin in the centre of the ring. Morrissey, long reach. Right and left from Morrissey. Both land onto the gloves though, Cronin. Cronin with a wide left hand, a beautiful right hand from Morrissey. That was a very good shot. But Cronin comes with two thundering oh, oh, shots. Sadalos that up with a left-right combination to the face of Jamie Morrissey. Right in the center of the ring. It's toe to toe. And a Hagler and Thomas Hearns. And a tremendous scrap here in Leisureland. Morrissey going with the head there now. The ref should call him aside for that as I well. He's going in with the head. He is. Yeah, and Cronin is not flinching though. No. Another fantastic right hand from Kevin oh, he's Cronin. He's walking him down. Morrissey is in trouble here. Deep in the eighth round. Kevin Cronin, who looked to be behind on the scorecards early on, is certainly coming with all guns blazing in this contest. Morrissey is holding on. An uppercut from Cronin. Morrissey returns with a left jab and a right shot. Morrissey's corner is shouting frantically. They know Morrissey that comes forward. Cash. And a bit of a left hand from Kevin Cronin. A third left hand from Cronin. And Morrissey is in trouble right above us here in Sartell. He's going right ahead again. He's leading in with the head. The ref has to say something. In all fairness. The referee takes him apart. The crowd certainly rising to Kevin Cronin here because he's shown tremendous durability. Oh, double what jab. A right hand. Two jab. Oh, my God. What a combination. Fantastic. Five unanswered punches from the gloves of Kevin Cronin. Morrissey holds on for dear life. Cronin on top and deep into the 8th round. We're 2.20 into the 8th round. Here in Leisureland for the vacant Irish light heavyweight title. Kevin Cronin from the Kingdom of Kerry. Jamie Morrissey from Limerick. A tremendous battle. Cronin certainly coming on strong on these stages of the, the scrap. Morrissey held on for dear life deep in the middle of that round. And comes with a right hand there as Cronin takes a breather on the road. But comes forward again. Cronin low ahead bowed low. Comes with a rattle, goes to the body. Morrissey again is holding on. We're in, coming approaching the final 10 seconds of round number eight. Morrissey with a right, no retaliation, a right left combination from Kevin Cronin. Morrissey locks him up again and holds on for dear life. The referee intervenes. The final five seconds. The bell goes for the end. George, this fight is turned, turned on its head. Turned on its head. There's no doubting, Sean. That Cronin has certainly been reinvigorated yeah. from round number five on. I've only about one round in it, and in fairness, that round I'd nearly call it a draw. And, and, and we're going into round nine now. So Cronin, in fairness to him, I'd give him the last three rounds. He's really come back in. He's absolutely superb. He's now dictating the terms of the fight. Morrissey, while landing a couple of punches, 
hasn't got the flow of the combinations that he had in the earlier part of the, the contest. And Cronin is certainly getting the better of the exchanges. Yeah, the loose punches are gone now for Morrissey and it's uh, holding on stuff at the moment. His corner working over there as we watch Cronin's corner a bit more measured. Uh, as we look on, the medical people also looking on in the corner of Kevin Cronin, as they are of Jamie Morrissey. The referee is over speaking to Morrissey's corner as he moves to the neutral corner himself. He calls the boxes together. For the ninth round of 10, Jamie Cronin has a 5 3 to Cronin. Well, we'll see the judgment of I have been four all and, and I'm one very close to Paul. So, uh, yeah, this ninth round could be decisive, but I think Morrissey knows that he needs a massive round, Sean. Big time. Uh, you know, Cronin's now on the front foot. And he's dictating the fight. He certainly is. He's calling Morrissey onto him. He looks at Morrissey. Morrissey is trying to keep it at, at distance. Cronin wants to make oh, his catch again. again. A beautiful left hand from, again. A beautiful left hand from Kevin Cronin. Another left hand from Cronin. He follows that up. Morrissey is wild with a shot. And a right uppercut that was a bit wild into the salt tail air. Cronin hits him with a beautiful left hand. And it, Morrissey goes in inside a good combination from, Mar from Morrissey. Does land two punches out of the face of Kevin Cronin who pushes Morrissey away. Push. Oh, an uppercut there again. Cut right onto the chin of Morrissey. And you've got to give Morrissey credit for withstanding that punch. Going in with the shoulder now, Morrissey as well. Referee separating the boxers. It certainly has been a tremendous scrap. Morrissey just above his own corner. Tries to dance his way right above us here in the neutral corner, just to our right of our commentary position here in Leisureland. Morrissey comes forward, Kevin Cronin coming again. Cronin with a right hand. Both fighters now showing the scars of battle. That's a beautiful left jab to the face of Morrissey from Kevin Cronin. And again, and again, and again jab. Cronin's on top here. Most definitely in this yeah. round. If you had it 4 all coming into this round, Sean, I have a feeling you're going 5-4 to Kevin Cronin. As we reach the two-thirds of the way through the ninth round of ten. Kevin Cronin from the Kingdom of Kerry and Jamie Morrissey from Limerick. Cronin has certainly had the better of the exchanges in the second half of the fight. Morrissey on the back foot. Morrissey on the back, on the back, back foot back and he's just, yeah. just hoping to get a lead, land with a long one. Long left hand. But Cronin has his man on the run. Cronin coming forward. It's over Cronin's corner. There you go. He replies with the 1-2, Cronin. Morrissey 2-1. Boom shield has gone again and it's gone out of the ring this time. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's Cronin's boom shield this time. Yeah, Morrissey. it is Cronin. That's the second time Cronin's come. First he came out without it. And that just flew out of the ring. Again, the referee sends both boxers to neutral corners. As we reach the latter stage of round, a lovely left right around the outside from Cronin. Landed on the jaw of Morrissey. Morrissey comes on a beautiful shot again to the left, with the left hand from Cronin. Morrissey responds with a left of his own. Tries to follow up with a right, what is the wide swinging left hand. They'll find it 10 seconds of round number nine. Kevin Cronin, right above us here, tries to land the punch. Morrissey ducks out of the way. And now nine of 10, Sean. Certainly has got this crowd on their feet. Oh, this is this is unbelievable. Like for, for the first pro show in Galway in many, many, many years. What what a level of boxing. Just on this boat alone, the Galway audience has been treated to. And I certainly have, Sean. To me, I think Cronin edged it again. And it could be down to this round, this very last round. One would feel, Sean, the way the way the boxing the boat has gone. That Morrissey needs a massive round. I would think. <laughs> In my view, I think yeah. Morrissey certainly needs a, a huge final round. Yeah. Jamie Cronin. Uh, Jamie Conlon thinks it's very, very close. Both of them. Yeah. But for me, I would slightly think that, Cro that Cronin has got the better of the argument. In the, certainly in the latter stages of the match. Jamie Conlon just signaled over so they both have heart. That's for sure. Both have heart. Both have heart. Yeah. Tenth, and and the crowds will be on their feet for this last yeah. round. And they are. They're on their feet. They're on their feet. Right, they made a wonderful scrap. 
and it's going to be a titanic final three minutes one would think the destination of the vacant Irish light heavyweight title rests on the next two minutes and 35 seconds of this bout a wild uppercut from Jamie Morrissey does not land and Cronin is asking him to come forward Cronin is like a gladiator oh yes two great shots from Cronin Morrissey Gets him again. Showing a bit of fatigue, I would think, Sean, at yeah. this late stage of the bout. The final round, we're just 40 seconds into the final. There you go. There you go. Another combination. And Morrissey has gone for Morrissey. Yeah. Left. Yeah. Once again, we hold, we're held up. Once again, we hold up. Once again, we hold up. Crowd, crowd don't like us. No. Cronin's corner doesn't like it, and Cronin doesn't like it. This is three times in the fight now. Yep. The referee doesn't give any warning. No, Morrissey. There you go. Morrissey replies with big punches. What a shame big for punches. Cronin. Morrissey uses that breather, but Cronin. Oh, yes. A tree, tremendous. Morrissey has no absolute sledge. Morrissey. Cronin is going for the Irish title in this final round. We're almost halfway through the final round of ten, and Kevin Cronin from the Kingdom of Kerry. It's George oh, running through the best, I would think, 30 seconds of the fight so far for him. I've he seen has landed with every punch. Yeah, I've seen more title fights that wouldn't stand up to this. Oh, it's an absolute terrible yeah. fight. And the coach has gone again, and Cronin hits him twice after he spits out the gun shield. And that's kind of much to say. You've done it twice, you've done it three times, now it's four. There's certainly the referee so what's the referee going to do? In, will, it, will he intervene here? Yeah, Cronin punched him after the gun shield went out. He's doing nothing. Yeah. But there's no doubt that Morrissey is in trouble. They're both lucky. But you know, a warning would destroy, a warning would destroy a, a, a big fight like this in the last round anyway. It probably would, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Again, there's a yeah, gun the, shield gone. The Cronin's gun shield is gone now. You know, if the, if the ref doesn't lay down the law in all sports area on, you know, you're going to push it as far as you yes, can. You, one wonders are they using that as an excuse. I personally don't think they are. No. Such is the intensity of the battle, Sean, that that's what's happening here. Both boxers going with everything they have. Kevin Cronin from Kerry against Jamie Morrissey from Limerick. Such for the vacant. This is Cronin's rounds. This is Cronin's rounds. Without doubt, Sean Cronin is on top. The vacant light heavyweight title. Right oh, over he's the is is oh, oh, again. Now at this stage, yeah, and you know what? The judges, the judges, the judges will look at that as well. Maybe if the ref doesn't take action, the judges yes, the the judge will, will go a 10 8 round with Sean. Yeah, yeah. The referee is talking to Morrissey's people. Kevin Cronin has the crowd on his side here. The the new, one thing's the neutrals are with Kevin Cronin. Cronin talking Sean. to the ref. But Kevin Cronin, for a man who was on the rack early on in this scrap, has come back. There he goes again, again. four combinations. Wonderful fight, a tremendous battle for the vacant Irish light heavyweight title. We're deep in the towards of the final minute of this round. As Kevin Cronin lands a wild punch. Morrissey is coming forward. He's out on his feet. Maybe Cronin is too, but he's just showing that bit of ring craft and determination that he wants to take the vacant Irish light heavyweight title back to the county of Kerry. Morrissey with a wild swing, connects to the side of the head, but I think Cronin feels that he may just have done enough oh, great to lift this prize. The final 10 seconds, and there they go, they're at it again. Go. Hammer the top, oh, Cronin. Oh, oh, under feet here. It it is is absolutely oh my God, what a And fight. it's over. Oh, oh my God, everyone's up, everyone's up. And all of the stuff, up on this. The whole absolute standing ovation. A wonderful fight, oh, my God. For the vacant Irish light heavyweight title. This has been one of the most epic fights. It was absolutely fantastic. I have seen in a long, long time. And it's just the two boys are absolutely out on their feet. Good to see them talking to each other there after the bell. Yes. You know, no animosity after the bell. Oh. They're, they both know yeah. that they have contributed to a great nine, uh, 30 minutes of boxing here. Cronin's on Cronin believes. Cronin believes he has won. Yeah, yeah. I think he may be right. I think he took it. What a turnaround in the fight. He was certainly on the wrong end of the first four rounds, Sean. Definitely. I mean, like there was one there, I would have called it nearly a draw for him. But we gave, we gave Morrissey the, the benefit of the doubt. 
but my God, I'm proud of this play from the crowd here on our left hand oh, side. Big time, big time. No pressure on the judges here tonight. I don't think so. <laughs> but the judges, no, the judges also know they do that know, that's, yeah, that yeah. fight for the vacant Irish light heavyweight title was worthy of such a billing. Jamie Conlon's coming into the ring now as well, and uh, this is just oh my God, what a precursor to the main event. Certainly. I think Connell is coming in to congratulate both boxers. Yeah, yeah. Those men earned their money tonight and some. Yeah, certainly did. And they also give the huge attendance here, Sean, value for their money. Absolutely, yeah. I think, just looking at Jamie Morrissey, I have a feeling that he may know that those concluding rounds went the way of his rival, Kevin Cronin. I, I'd agree with you there. I'd agree with you, George. Yeah, the body language. The Kerry flag is in the ring before yeah. it's announced. The, the Kerry flag. The it place is on wire here. Absolutely deafening. Yeah. The result hasn't been called yet, but the place has gone absolutely wild. And his crowd are just here beside. Uh, his supporters are just here to our side. We're about to go live on Gorham BFM, but there ain't nobody with people listening at home and listening around the world. A big hello to Paul Levelle listening in Boston, Massachusetts, USA. And Chan Kilmartin, I spoke to him earlier this evening, he's in Malta. He would love to be here for the fight with his wife Donna tonight, but they're on holiday in Malta. And they're in, going to enjoy this. The main event, but if they were here, they would have seen one of the great battles for an Irish light heavyweight title. It may have been a vacant bout, but it's certainly, but whichever way the decision is going to go, it's going to go, we believe, to a winner of an absolutely gladiatorial scrap. Yeah, and you know, hats off to Morrissey. Morrissey won in Belfast. He could have ducked and dived Cronin. and he knew what he was up against when he, he, he agreed to the rematch. It was a tight fight the last time. And you know, to win a title and come back and give give Cronin a go at it again is, is you know, in fairness to Morrissey, fair play to him. And uh, he's the Limerick flag now in the ring as well, so <laughs> one wonders which way. Yeah. All ears now are on the decision of Terry Kavanagh.
of Jimmy Lennon Jr. Sean in many times in the showtime it says it's showtime and it certainly is showtime for Malloy here in Leisureland they touch gloves 
the main event of the evening and welcome to those of us, people listening to us on Galway FM on radio on GalwayFM.ie on ESPN Sport here we go for eight rounds of boxing Fernando Mascara from Colombia's Kira Malloy comes forward with that southpaw stance in the first right jab goes out from Malloy lunging right hand from Mascara who with the white gloves white trunks trimmed with the Colombian flag a much stockier opponent than Malloy Malloy gets forward, Mosquera tries to come forward with the white gloves, Malloy leads with her right hand over towards the blue corner area of the ring from our commentary position here in the centre of the ring we look out at Malloy, back to us stalks his opponent the crowd waiting in anticipation as Malloy goes forward with her right hand Mosquera, stocky backs back into the neutral corner on the far side of the ring tries a jab out and looks to, to, to try a jab on her left hand doesn't go, Malloy is stalking his man into the corner referee watching David Irwin watching attentively as Malloy lands a little left hand doesn't really trouble the Colombian but Malloy goes over the top of the right hand the Colombian trying to make out that he hit him with the back of the head I don't know what he was watching once again leading with the right hand Kieran Malloy focused the Colombian comes forward Mosquera comes forward to want to keep his head up by the referee David Irwin as we reach a minute and 20 seconds in round number one the Colombian tangles up and Malloy slips away and goes back to the centre of the ring and takes control of the opening round Kieran Malloy with an undefeated record of 4-0 and here in his first fight in his native Galway as a professional Mosquera comes forward with a long right hand tries to land on the jaw of Malloy but Malloy slips it away Malloy coming forward southpaw stance right front Front, on the right front foot right hand right above us here in the neutral corner Malloy goes over the top Mosquera looks at him sits him down Mosquera trying to move around the ring force Malloy onto him Malloy hasn't backed into his own corner now over on the far side of the ring that of course is the blue corner in that corner is the Malloy team and they applaud as Malloy he lands with a right and a left crowd beginning to get excited here as we go into the final minute of the opening round Kira Malloy a left that lands on the arm of Fernando Mosquera. Mosquera comes with a right hand. Malloy retaliates with a right hand of his own. Center of the ring. Mosquera backing back on towards the ropes. Malloy, as always, even in his amateur days, cautious in the opening round. Stalks out his man. Lands a short, sharp left hand to the face of Fernando Mosquera. Malloy takes the ribs out of Mosquera with a lovely right hand shot. Mosquera comes forward to tie up his opponent. Malloy tries to wangle his way out the referee David Irwin steps in tells Mosquera not to be holding Mosquera looks back at, at the referee and Malloy lands a right hand to the side of the face of Fernando Mosquera another right hand is that jab that right jab of Malloy is now beginning to find its range as we go deep into the final minute we're into the final 10 seconds of round number one here in Leisureland the first pro boxing event the top of the bill for the first time in over 15 years we have a pro boxing bill here in Galway and Kieran Malloy has got through his first round as a professional boxer here in Galway in his fifth fight an excellent opening round Sean yeah a nice controlled round uh, it was good to see the crowd didn't get to him he settled into the boxing straight away through, through a night combinations working on the head working on the body as well in fairness to him he's good strong arms so you know he's, he's the shorter boxer so he's good strength to tie up Kieran when he comes at him yeah. which I wouldn't blame the guy one thing I'd be wary of and he's not doing it on purpose because he's that bit smaller when he comes in he rises with his head yes. Kieran will just want to watch for that but yes. it wouldn't be done on purpose it's no. just something to watch out for no, he was but, fine. Uh, I thought, I thought Mosquera was fighting just around the ring. He was forcing Mar Malloy onto him. Yeah. He was just waiting to see what Malloy, Malloy was made of. But let's say, in commentary, even in his amateur days, Kieran's opening round was always a cautious round. Yeah. He, looked, he liked to set up with his opponent, get the measure of the ring, get the measure of his opponent, see how, he, how, the ag how agile his opponent was before going to work later in the fight. Absolutely. And, and being the short man, we've seen Cronin rushing in the first few rounds on the last fight. Yes. He's more calm about what he's doing and his timing when he's going in. So, yeah, we're getting ready for round number two. Round number two of a scheduled eight at Weatherweight has Kira Malloy from Uctarard against Fernando Mascuera from Colombia in South America by way of Valencia in Spain. Take us into the second round at Weatherweight. The top of the bill fight on this Conlon boxing bill in association with top rank promotions and bar seven here in Galway. Kieran Malloy. Mascuera with the left hand. Malloy. Quietly, quietly going about his business. Leads with the right hand onto the glove of Mosquera. Gets him backed into Mosquera's own corner. That is the red corner right in front above us here. Malloy lands with a good right hand. Mosquera ducks away. As Malloy stalks his prey in the corner. Mosquera 
as Sean said, slightly shorter man. Very sharp comes up, but Malloy connected there to the chin of Square, and he did but take a step backwards. He's on the ropes, but Malloy steps back again. South Paul lead as always, but Square over the top trying to catch the Malloy top, yeah. on the top of the head. Didn't really do any damage to Malloy, who now steps away. Malloy, very, very focused right in front of us here with the maroon togs, emblazoned with all his advertising. And of course, my square goes just down. Just it was a slip, slip more than anything, yeah. I would think. Just the referee asked my square, is he okay? Certainly is. I would put that down to a slip, as you said, Sean. Yeah, well, with Kieran being so poor, he ought to dox. They're, they're, they're going to clash. They're going to have a clash. My square came forward again here. He seems to be, he's upper, he's very strong upper body, my yeah, Sean. Yeah, yeah. Good, good big arms on him there. And uh, he, he's a good guard, you know, when he goes behind it because of the size yeah. of his arms. And he said, and as we said, he had a lengthy amateur career also. But Kieran Malloy, the crowd now beginning to go behind Malloy. In round number two, it's Mosquero go. People bring into the fields of Athen Rye. It's a fair distance here, walking from Athen Rye took the turn, but still, the crowd are in good form. And why wouldn't they? They've seen some tremendous fights here tonight, including that Irish light heavyweight title. But this is the main event of the evening as we step in towards a minute and 52 seconds of round number two here in Leisureland. Kieran Malloy from up to third, led a tremendous, tremendous, tremendous combination. A right-left combination to the side of the head of Fernando Masquera, who's on the ropes, midway through the ropes, the far side of the ring, between Malloy's corner and the neutral nice corner. Nice body punch from there. Malloy, a lift to the body, as Sean said. Masquera covers up. He backs out of the ropes with those white gloves. He attempts to come forward, but Malloy is stalking his prey and comes forward with a sh short jab, southpaw jab into the chest of... Goes with a left hand, doesn't really land. Masquera is now back to the neutral corner. Where Malloy goes to the work to the body. It was a good shot from Malloy, but Squera did react. Malloy goes in short again and lands at the head of Masquera. Masquera invites him onto him. I think that's not the wisest thing you could do in a fight like this. No, but he's happy to take them on the arms as well, George, he, and he, he shortens his body as well to take the body shots. He certainly shots. does. Yeah, he certainly does. Malloy, though, with that South Paul lead. Boxing it into the corner, occupied by the team and medical men and coaches of Fernando Masquera. We're into the final 10 seconds of round number two. And Kieran Malloy, a nice left hand from Kieran Malloy, Steps just stops a little yeah. short. Another comfortable round. As the, re the referee calls a halt to round number two, Sean. Round number two, another good round for Kieran Malloy. Again, slightly up the tempo. It's a gradual increase of the tempo. Exactly, yeah. You know, early on in the fight against an opponent like Mascara, you, you don't want to. You know, you don't want to rush into Anton and make Anton shoot, but you know what clash of heads can, can destroy a night for two boxers. So, Kieran's being smart, keeping him at range, picking to the body, picking to the head. You know, Mascara's making himself smaller than what he is, but uh, he'll need to, because there's, there's power in those punches from Kieran Malai, and, uh, you know, over time, they, they'll wear him down. He's looking comfortable enough in the corner there. Um, he is, doesn't seem too phased at the moment, no. but... Uh, the power of Kieran Malloy anyway in the last two rounds will test him. Yeah, I think, I think Malloy is just gradually getting his way into this, into this lap. He's comfortable, he looks very relaxed in his corner. He's enjoying the music there as well, it looks. <laughs> he was rotating the, the shoulders there as he came out. But the referee calls him together for round number three. Round number three of eight for this welterweight contest that tops the bill here in the Conlon Boxing top rank promotion in association with the Bar 7 in Galway here in Leisureland. The seventh of seven very exciting fights here tonight in yeah. Letterland. Mosquera was wild there with a right hand. Malloy slipped away. Malloy comes forward with a good left hand. Rocks rock went Mosquera onto the ropes. Right above us here in our commentary position here in Letterland. Mosquera dips low. He tries the to head, push him back onto the, him back yeah. the ropes. Malloy works inside. Mosquera is taken away. He'll get a speaking. He'll be talked to by the referee. Mosquera smiles. Malloy comes forward. Stalking his prey. A good shot from Mosquera, a retaliation, a beautiful left uppercut from Kieran Malloy. Malloy finding his range once again in round number three. Fernando Mosquera. Gloves held high, back down to the ropes, right above us here. And Malloy, with venom in his eyes, goes to work above Mosquera, right he's above us. He's got the one under the left rib there. Yes, indeed, Mosquera yeah, really got him. Right above us here, Kieran Malloy, a beautiful shot to the rib cage of Fernando Mosquera. Mosquera holding on, the referee splits them away and they move back again and Malloy resumes his business in the middle of the, the ring with the bar seven logo on the back of his togs. Kieran Malloy goes forward, the shouts of come on Kieran come from our left hand side. People from all parts of the world and certainly the parts of County Galway and beyond are here to see this scrap and Malloy is giving them what they wanted to see so far. In this the third round, a beautiful left hand to the jaw of Mosquera. 
It was a long left hand, but it uh, certainly hit its target. That's oh, as did that right to the ribs. And Malloy now here in round number three, finding his way in. Right in Mascara's corner. Malloy goes in. Mascara covers up. And Malloy once again left has right in the Mascara. Swipes from Mascara. Mascara yeah. looks at him. He grimaces. He fixes his togs. He looks. He says to Malloy, come on, see what you've got. Malloy will come back once more. That's South Paul lead from the man from up to the third. The body is sore though, George. The body is sore as crossed his arms across his He said it's a low blow, the referee may yeah. agree, but then Musquare is dipping low, that's what's forcing that. Malloy, the right lead, as we move into two minutes and 20 seconds of round number three here in Leisureland. Kieran Malloy, from up to third against Fernando Musquare from Colombia, at welterweight, the fifth professional bout of Malloy's career, who had a wonderful amateur career, one of the most finest elite boxers we've seen in this country for many a day and certainly joining some of the greats from the west of Ireland. The Sean Mannions of this world, the Aidan and Michael John Heffernans, the marching knees back in the day. Goes back of ours, Francie Barrett, who proudly carried the flag for Ireland in the Olympics. Well, I again, tagging up, Busquera comes forward. A good left hand from, uh, from Malloy, lands onto the chin of Musquera. Musquera is getting a bit braver now in this round. He's coming out of his shell, but Malloy wraps him up. Musquera holds on, wraps up Malloy. Malloy doesn't want this, he wants it at the end of round number three. Another good round for Kieran Malloy, Sean. Great round, George, and definitely uh, the body punches took their toll there on Musquera. Like, you can see him crossing his arms across his midriff kind of to protect himself. So he does that at the risk of getting a punch in the face. So that's how it is. It's about working your opponent down. Kieran is doing that, breaking him down, breaking him down with the body and the head. So just look at the breathing there of Masquera. He's breathing, I won't say heavily, but he's certainly feeling the exertions of the blows at Kieran Malloy. We look at Kieran Malloy in his corner. He looks quite comfortable, Sean. Absolutely. He looks like he's getting ready to come out for the first round. Yeah, it, it is. The next round will be round number four. That's round number four of scheduled eight rounds here at Welterweight. Referee David Irwin is in the far corner of the ring. He's in the neutral corner. He's also enjoying the atmosphere here, there's no doubt. And it's important for people too. Kieran's early on in his career, and rounds are important. You know, I know he had a, his first three fights were stoppages. But you know what? Get in there this evening and enjoy it. And you know the second half of this fight, if it goes that far, you'll see him lifting the, 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 the race. The referee calls him together for round number four, and we get underway. And welterweight here in Leisureland with this Conlon boxing and top rank promotion. Kieran Malloy from Uktarard and Galway here. Southpaw stands as he's had throughout his career, leading the orthodox style of Fernando Masquera. Back side of the ropes over in the corner, occupied by Kieran Malloy's backroom team. And the square has uh, switched to Southpaw now as he well. Yes, he's yeah. switching on. Is that a sign maybe that he's finding it double, tough, to diffi difficult shot? Maybe he took too much on the left, so I'd like to yes, go for the right. Possibly, yes. <laughs> and Malloy, a beautiful yeah. right hand that landed on the jaw of, of Fernando Masquera. Masquera comes forward and holds on. He's Malloy. back to orthodox again now. He's back, he is, and Malloy is coming forward. The crowd singing all ALA behind us. As Malloy comes forward, stalks his opponent, his opponent ducks, almost goes down on one knee as he tries to get inside a right from Kieran Malloy. Kieran Malloy with a left uppercut that again shook Musquera's ribcage. Musquera tempting Malloy onto him. The small squat style of Musquera. Malloy opens up with two, a combination, a left-right combination towards the ribcage of Fernando Musquera. Malloy enjoying a reach advantage over the dominion of Colombia. But Kilmeade goes forward, he walks onto a right hand from Kieran Malloy that just about glanced onto the jaw of Fernando Mosquera. He's definitely trying to avoid those body shots in there. We're coming, he certainly is shown as yeah, we approach yeah. the halfway mark in this round. Kieran Malloy. Top billing in all his fifth professional fight here in his home city of Galway. Lands a left hand, beautiful left hand under the jaw of Fernando Mosquera. the back of the head, Mosquera. Morris complaining about the back of the head, I don't know what he's complaining about. He comes forward with a couple of punches of his own. Malloy takes somebody stride. Malloy lands a right under the face of, of Fernando Mosquera. He lands another right, right above a competent position here in Leisureland. A good shot from Mosquera, a bit fresh air, but he turns away again. He turns his back. He dances away. He moves over towards the corner occupied by the Malloy contingent. Center of the ring, Kieran Malloy against Fernando Mosquera. Fourth round of schedule eight here in Leisureland and Salt Hill in Gobe. A beautiful left hand from Kieran Malloy. Lands right on and that rocked the Colombian. A left uppercut from Malloy that has put the Colombian back in. He waves his hands and say, you're not hurting me. My God almighty, you're a good actor, Mr. Mosquera. Malloy again comes forward. 
pushes him onto the ropes over towards the neutral corner. Mosquera comes forward with the right hand of his own. Malloy takes it in his oh, lovely lovely hook. beautiful right hook right to the chin of Fernando Mosquera. Mosquera is holding on again as we approach two minutes, 40 seconds in round number four here in Leisureland. Mosquera squats again as Malloy goes and leads with a beautiful left hand from Malloy. Didn't quite hit the target, but it was almost there. A right hand comes over the top and hit Mosquera. Mosquera ties up Malloy as we're deep into the throws of the final seconds of round number four, Sean Clancy. Another good round from Kieran Malloy. Yeah, and in fairness in that round, Mosquera, he's not offering an to in relation to turning punches. He's more interested about protecting himself, moving around, coming off the ropes. You know, um, I, I definitely think the body punches have, have, has taken its toll on him and uh, he might be trying to just take a round to recover from those punches before he goes at it again. But uh, yeah, Kieran's quite comfortable. Uh, coming into the fifth round, sixth is the most he's done so far. He did that out in Frankfurt in Germany. Yeah. So again, good to get rounds under your belt. Uh, he, nothing he, wrong with it. At the press conference in Bar 7 earlier in the week, he was clear, keen to say that. He was not diminishing the quality of his opponent, but what he said was it's about getting rounds. Uh, and this is my first eight rounder. It tells me that I'm jumping up to it another Basically, it's another 33%. We so got two, two rounds more than he went over the six. Yeah, it's all about building. And the longer he's in there, the more he can try, and the more his corner will learn about him yeah. and what they need to work on again. So, and even use this this fight to work on stuff that he tried in the gym. That certainly is. The referee is calling boxers to the centre of the ring as we start round number seven, or round number five of the scheduled eight. As right in front of us here, Kieran Malloy leads with two rights to the jaw area of Fernando Mosquera. Mosquera ducks and dives and moves in front of us here and goes into that neutral corner as above us. A beautiful combination oh, of Kieran Malloy right over the top of the left uppercut. Another straight left that lands under the jaw of Mosquera. Malloy with intent in his face now as we look at, up into the ring. Malloy carrying on. Mosquera with oh, a beautiful shot of his own. Punch. But Malloy caught him over that beautiful shot from Malloy that put back Mosquera right above us here. In legend, an absolutely jam-packed legend and here on this Condon boxing and top rank billing. Top of the bill, Kieran Malloy from Uchtenard against Fernando Mosquera from Colombia. He's gone southpaw again now into the southpaw stand. He's gone Mosquera. into the southpaw stand, a beautiful right to the ribcage of Mosquera. And that certainly must have hurt and actually nearly hurt us here, Sean, at ringside. But Malloy comes forward once again. Mosquera right over it, above us here. The crowd are chanting. Malloy's corner are urging him on. Mosquera dances right in front of us. Kieran Malloy comes right over Another with us. body punch. Left body punch, Mosquera holds on as we're oh, to the head, second, two. a rocking punch, Mosquera is hurt yeah, right he's falling forward, he's falling forward, he's, forward. Yeah, he's held on now, he's held on yeah, for yeah. dear life, and Malloy has hit the target, Mosquera looks at him, he smiles, is that a smile of defence, or is it a smile that he knows that the clock is ticking on this bomb about him, because we're deep in the fifth round, we're a minute and 25 seconds into it, and Kieran Malloy, from Uchtenard here in Galway, with a perfect record of 4-0 and zero as a professional, comes forward, hits McQuarrie. Oh, oh, that was a hard body punch. It certainly was. He bent the knee there. He did bent the knee, he bent more than the knee. I thought he, the man was chin-afflicting. <laughs> they come, Malloy comes forward. Mosquera now showing the scars of battle in this round. Oh, a beautiful oh, shot by Malloy. Oh, no, no. Mosquera says it was a low blow. He said it was a low blow. He dropped his hands. You're supposed to protect yourself at all times. Malloy hit him, he's getting the count now. He certainly is getting the count, he's yeah. getting a standing eight count. The referee is asking him, is he good enough to continue? Kieran Malloy in the fifth, fifth round here in Legendland. The crowd are going into overdrive. As Kieran Malloy comes forward against Fernando Mosquera from Colombia. He's holding on, he's holding on. Mosquera is holding on for dear life for two minutes and 12 seconds into the fifth round, Sean. And Kieran Malloy, by far, this is his most productive round of the contest. Absolutely, yeah, and you know, um, the power punch has started from the very they start certainly of the And another beautiful right hand there lands on the jaw of Fernando Mosquera. He's backed into his own corner and left uppercut from Malloy. Deep into the throws of 2 minutes and 31 seconds in round number 5. Kieran Malloy at welterweight. His fifth professional fight, a perfective professional record of 4-0. and zero. He has oh, Mosquera in his an absolutely beautiful round again. again. Mosquera is good and he's looking at the referee. He's complaining what he's complaining about. I do not know about Mosquera. He has to be given credit. He's very game. He's standing up to the best. Malloy is thrown at him. And the left hand lands in the face of Fernando Mosquera. He's grimacing. He's wondering, can he last another four seconds? A beautiful right hand from Malloy at the end of the fifth round. And the bell will toll at the end of this fifth round. And will tell us that Kieran Malloy has by far put in his most productive 
round of boxing here in Leisure Land Galway, Sean. Absolutely, George. And you said about Mosquera's amateur career, he's shown his streetwise there by holding on. What he didn't show in streetwise, if you get a blow below the belt, your first reaction isn't to put your hands in the air. You actually go down on your knee. If anyone ever had the misfortune of getting one, they tell you you wouldn't throw your hands in the air. He left himself unprotected. The lie landed 1-2 and put him back in his backside, and the referee rightly gave him a count. But in fairness to him, when he is getting in trouble, he's holding... He's pulling his opponent in, and he's streetwise. He's very streetwise. Yes, he's no journeyman, Sean, to be quite honest. He's very streetwise, as you yeah, say. Yeah. He has experience. Obviously, that long amateur career. We don't know much about his amateur career, but what we do know is that he has a lot about. Yeah, well, he, say, he, he is breathing heavily. He is breathing heavily, and those body punches. We seen him there. You said he nearly chin inflicted. He did in front of us, uh, and each one is here, uh, here on the line. Knows that maybe. Round number six could very well be the round where he will dispatch Fernando Mosquera. Only time will tell as the referee calls the gladiators to the centre of the ring and Kieran Malloy starts on the attack with a right-left combination. As Fernando Mosquera right above us here comes forward head bowed onto Malloy's way. He lands a punch, a beautiful left uppercut from Kieran Malloy. Well, Square comes over with the top of the right hand, but Malloy deflects that away with his left hand. Very a sweeping left hand from Kieran Malloy. A right to the face of Masquera that's backed over in the neutral corner on the far side of the ring. Malloy sets him out into the ribcage. Masquera holds on, slaps Malloy at the back of his ribs. He's looking at the referee. He's looking at Malloy. Kieran Malloy, a beautiful oh. up shot. One, two, uppercut. Lands in the face. Another beautiful left hand from Kieran Malloy. Masquera back in his own corner. And left, left uppercut. This... It has to be said, it's a great rear action from, from Mosquera, but Malloy has landed but beautiful left-hand shot over the neutral corner. Mosquera comes forward and he holds on for dear life in the centre of the ring. We're 53 seconds into the sixth of eight rounds. He's taken some heavy punches. He certainly has. The crowd shout, Kieran, Kieran, Kieran. A beautiful left-hand from Malloy. He's answering the crowd's call. Round number six, we're one minute and five seconds into it. And Malloy comes forward right above us here in our commentary position at the Le Leisureland in association with Conlon Boxing and Top Rank Promotions. Kieran Malloy with a left hand to the face of Fernando Mosquera. Mosquera bends again in front of us, holds on for dear life. We're a minute and 20 seconds into the round. Once again, Malloy, unfazed, lands a right hand on the side of the face of Fernando Mosquera. Mosquera lands a right of his own, it's a good shot, but Malloy returns with a left uppercut. Mosquera holds on, and Malloy hits him with a beautiful right hand right above us. He's right above us here in our commentary position. He backs onto the ropes right in front of us. Sean, Sean Clancy takes a base of action as we come in deep into the sixth round. And we're a minute and 50 seconds into this round, and Kieran Malloy, referee David Irwin, hasn't had much to deal with in this contest. Both boxers are respecting his control. Mosquera smiles at Malloy as he goes to the body. A beautiful uppercut. Oh, and this it could be a great combination. And Malloy comes forward. Mosquera has nothing to answer. Malloy hits him a beautiful line left hand. A beautiful left hand out of the face of Mosquera, who did retaliate with a right of his own. And a, another right to the side of the head of Mosquera. I must say, the ref David Irvine, he's watching it. He's watching it closely. He certainly is. Yeah, yeah. He certainly is. Malloy swinging the left hand, swinging the right hand. With two minutes and 24 seconds into the six to eight rounds. We're over to the neutral corner of Kieran Malloy with a punch. savage left body punch to the ribcage of Fernando oh, Mosquera at that one. To the right. Oh my, my God. God almighty. <laughs> if that fellow was hitting Taylor's today, he certainly found them there, Malloy. What a wonderful, that's a beautiful, oh, right. beautiful right. Malloy is now getting huge success to the body of Mosquera. The crowd breaking the song once again here in the sixth round in Leisureland. As Kieran Malloy lands another punch onto the face of Fernando Mosquera. A beautiful left hand from Malloy with a right combination. As we hit the end of round number six, another superb round for Malloy, Sean. Absolutely. More and more power punches, great combinations, work in the body, work in the body. And in fairness to him, not doing anything silly, you know. Uh, picking his punches, keep working on his opponents, keep breaking them down. But he's a solid opponent. He's not thrown back much, he's taken a lot. And then he's protecting himself by holding and all that. But uh, you know he looks game. He's, he's not gonna. He's not going out looking to, to, to put up a fight. But he's not looking to get out of there either. You know. Yeah, so he did throw one right hand there in that round. Yeah. It didn't really do a lot of do a lot to Kieran Malloy. But he has a dangerous punch. He has a and then on a, like he's. Uh, in fairness, you can't stay under your guard forever either. You have to come out at some stage, and it's a mixture of body and head. You have to fight back because if you're sitting there taking punches from Kieran Malai, you won't stay there long. You have to move. You certainly will not. 
This is the search of round seven. It's beginning of round number seven as the referee calls the two boxers their respective rings dry. Some of the crowd on their toes again, urging them on. They certainly are. Maybe the crowd are getting a bit impatient. They wanted it on the stoppage. We're round number seven. But we also must now remember that Kieran Malloy moves into unknown territory. This, even though we're only 15 seconds into round number seven, the furthest he's been as a professional boxer as Masquera hits with a right of his own. Malloy, unfazed, comes forward. A right oh, left combination. That's a punch. beautiful right hand from Kieran Malloy. Masquera pulls out a left hand. Doesn't hit the target. Mosquera cover up. That's a tremendous left hand. A right body punch from Malloy. Hurts Mosquera. Mosquera tries to retaliate. Two good punches from Mosquera. The best two maybe he's thrown in the fight so far. Malloy replies. A left jab out from Mosquera. Forces Malloy back to the centre of the ring. But Malloy comes forward again with a right hand. The right hand gets through. A beautiful right hand gets to the centre of the face of Fernando Mosquera who dropped his guard. Is he trying to protect his ribs? One wonders. Mosquera charges forward. But in the end, Malloy steps away. A minute into round number seven, number seven of eight. Kieran Malloy from Up and formerly of Up Boxing Club in the outskirts of Galway City, just 12 miles outside the city of Galway, versus Fernando Mosquera. Malloy out, worn out, savage left up. He's up the end of a low blow. The referee is the knows that it was not a low blow, it was low into the ribcage. What it was, was on target. The referee, David Irwin, separates the boxes. Right in front of us here. A left good right hand from Mosquera, but Malloy slips away. A minute 37 into the round of seven. Seven rounds of eight as Malloy goes to work again in the body, tries to go around the back of Mosquera. Mosquera tries to throw a right of his own, but he is now more and more Sean beginning to hold on to Kieran Malloy. Yeah, you know, he, he is getting tired of That's a beautiful shot from Malloy. It's getting harder for him to move away, George. It is, it is. The crowd singing. The rock concerts were at Norm here in Leisureland many years ago. They're doing their best to reincarnate the likes of Tim Lizzie and status quo on YouTube. Kieran Malloy. Mosquera holding on. You've got to give him credit. He certainly came here to cause Malloy a bit of problems. Doing his best to frustrate the up the road man. But Malloy is calm. CCC. Cool, calm and collected for Malloy so far as we reach two minutes and 25 seconds in round number seven. Round seven of eight at the top of the build clash here in Leisureland in this boxing bill brought to you by Conlin Boxing, top rank promotions, ESPN and Bar 7 in Galway and live commentary on Galway BFM throughout the world on gbfm.ie. Again, just tying up here and there again on the yes. ropes. As we reach the final 20 seconds of round number seven, Mosquera came forward, Malloy, Takes the best he's had. Malloy goes inside with a left hand. Mosquera tries. What he's trying really is he's trying to just push him away. Malloy hits again. A beautiful shot from Malloy. Mosquera came forward with a right of his own. And a lower right of his own, but it doesn't land. It lands onto the arm of Kieran Malloy as we hit the final seconds of round oh. seven. An absolute cracker into the ribcage again of Malloy as we reach the final stages of round number seven. Malloy coming forward. He's Good pushing out here now, Mascara. He's pushing out here out of the mouth there yeah. after the last. Oh, right in his own corner. Yeah. Kieran Malloy lands a sucker punch right at the end. And the walk of Fernando Mascara back to his corner on our left hand side. Sean Clancy, that's the red corner. Was a slow walk. A very slow walk. And just before he got him over to the corner with the last body punch, he had a gasp of air. A stream of mist came with it as well. And as you said, it was a slow slumber walk back to the corner. He looked like the man, I think, starting the second gallon of Porto, baby. <laughs> The ring ladies tell us that round number eight is coming up. It's the eighth and final round of this top of the bill clash on a night of tremendous professional boxing here in Leisureland. As we say, brought to you in association with Conman Boxing, top rank promotions, bar seven in Galway, Galway Bay FM Sport. A packed attendance here. Just, uh, you know, you've covered a lot of historic nights in Galway Sport, George, but. This is going on there with one of the, yeah, one of the biggest ones. Absolutely fantastic, Sean, I think. You know, the Malloy family said they'd bring boxing back to Galway as the referee brings them together. They touch gloves for the eighth and final round of the top of the mill clash between the welterweight Kieran Malloy who looked at Ireland County Galway and Fernando Mosquera from Colombia, boxing out of Valencia in Spain for the last number of years. Right above us here as Mosquera moves away over towards the... The red corner occupied by the backroom team of Kieran Malloy. The crowd starts singing, oh, Kieran Malloy. 
A beautiful left hand that has rocked oh, Muxquera yeah. right under the ropes in front of us into the neutral corner. Muxquera tries to find his way out of it. He holds on for dear life. Referee David Irwin tells him. Boxers displayed. It's Muxquera that's holding on. David Irwin knows that. He tells Muxquera to come away. And Malloy comes forward again. A clubbing right hand over the top. Muxquera knows nothing of that game and has come here to battle. Kieran Malloy, centre of the ring, an uppercut, a right, like Muscara go wobbles, Just but he's still, how, that man's centre of gravity is unbelievable, because how he stayed up after that right from Kieran Malloy is unbelievable. He's hanging on for dear life as we hit the final two minutes of the eighth and final round. Malloy goes forward again and cracks the ribcage once again, with again. but Muscara is very, very upper body strength, Sean, yeah. and he is tying this up. He's determined to survive the eighth round. Yeah, and all credit to him, you know, he, a lesser man would have quit long ago with the punishment long ago, he's, taken. he's taken punishment yeah. one sure thing I don't think he'd be doing many press ups in the morning <laughs> no it could be scrambled eggs as well there'd be nothing solid too much eh? no, it's a, but it's, you got to give him credit yeah absolutely we also got to give credit to Conlon Boxing top rank promotions and the Malloy family for bringing this boxing bill to Leisureland here in Galway as Kieran Malloy comes forward in the final minute and a half of his professional debut in the city of Galway his fifth career fight so far. He's into the eighth and final round. He's only ever went as far as six. He is undefeated. He's touted as a very, very top prospect by none other than the top ranked organization. And when they see him fight in Belfast, they knew what they were in that oh, beautiful left hand. The square has rattled and that has rattled him out of the earth. Yeah. So we'll get to the final minute of round of eight. Basquera. You've got to give him credit. He's held on for dear life. Somehow he has stood on his feet. But it's got beautiful right hand by Malloy. Oh, oh it's it's beautiful left hand. Oh, oh, another one. Musgrave now holds on for dear life. How this man has not gone down, I will never know. But Malloy, copy another left. Super oh, the last seven punches from Kieran Malloy have been right on the meat. And another clubbing right hand. But Musgrave holds on. We spoke about the ring craft of Morrissey and Conlon early, early on. But certainly this Musquera has shown them all his way. Beautiful right hand, the Musquera says at the back of his head, no sir, you ducked. I'll be an absolute creamer of a left hand. We're into the final 20 seconds of the eighth and final round of this professional bout. The top of the bill fight here in Galway's Rising, brought to you by Conlon Boxing. Ties Bar seven again. top ranked promotions of Galway Bay FM Sport as we get live into the final 10 seconds. The people shout clear and there's 10 seconds to go. Musquera takes up, clubbing right hand again. He holds on for dear life. He's going to last the eighth round. He deserves credit for that shot. Absolutely. You know, hats off to him. The bell goes. He's and Kieran Malloy salutes the, the crowd. The, occasion. the crowd go absolutely wild. And I think they got value from money, Sean. Yeah. Absolutely. And you wouldn't have a fight night without good opponents. No, and when people willing, boxers willing to come to Galway and stand up and stand tall in the ring, as small and short and all as he is, he stayed the distance. You know, all credit to him. You know, um, go on the eight rounds. And, uh, you know... A good learning curve again for Kieran Malai. You know, not everyone in there is going to go in and box the way you want them to box you. And you have to figure out the, the key to the door. I think when ring announcer Terry Kavner announces the results, we all know what's going to happen. Yeah. But Malai goes over to acclaim Masquerade. and Brace. Right in front of us both. All credit and to him. All credit to him. The referee, David Irwin, is totaling up his score. We believe nothing but a unanimous straight decision, an eight round decision for Kieran Malai. Without a doubt, on top of each of the eight rounds. We see as Michael Conlon comes into the ring, Jamie Conlon involved in the promotion of this bout. Please join us in Bar 7 Bridge Street for drinks after. You're more than welcome. We're all invited back. We're all invited back. There'll be a few of them on the book, it says, Sean. <laughs> the referee calls the gladiators together. Everybody knows, I think, what the decision will be. Absolutely. But I think it'll be what a, a massive roar, Sean. Yeah, what a homecoming. We finished off the show in style Thank you. 
Australia tonight. How did you feel during the fight? He just would not go down.